we lie. Uh, we lie. Seems good. Veldak, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Philip B, welcome in also. Seems good. Fantastic. Nice to see you all here today. Let's continue with space exploration. Wherein uh, we just tried this uh, first prototype of uh, a small... Try, trying to keep a, a, a victory ship below 2500 container stress. I don't know if it's going to be possible. Um, surprisingly... Triple F. F in three hours. In it's three Friday. hours. It is indeed Friday. Uh, Veldag, thank you so much for 23 months. Oh my goodness. Thank you very, very much for that. Much appreciated. And for everything else as well. Um... Sorry, just distracted by some noise. I hope it's not audible on your end. I, I, I imagine not. Uh, okay. Petri Cottontail, thank you very much for the two months Friday. as well. Friday, got to get down on Friday. We do gotta get down on Friday. It is the weekend. Weekend. Petri Cottontail, welcome in. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Uh, anyway, um, so the problem with this ship is it doesn't produce enough power. Um, turns out, I think it's a flat 4 gigawatt that the Nexus needs uh, to do the win the game recipe. Which means that this is like not quite cutting it. Um, we are bottlenecked on the high temp heat exchanges. Uh, because we were supposed to only need three-ish uh, high temp turbine generators by previous calculations. That was assuming that the power consumption would be the same as uh, for the interstellar travel data ship, which is, I think it's like uh, a gigawatt per... a gigawatt per hundred speed from the spaceship. The faster it's going, the more power it's consuming. Um, but yeah, I think the Victory ship is a flat 4 gigawatt. Um, so we need 4 gigawatt just for the Nexus. Honestly, anything that any crumb of power that's left over is going to be more than enough to power the rest of the ship. Why are we bunking? By the way, the Nexus says uh, power says is much how much power is needed for the recipe what six gigawatt oh my goodness <sighs> okay then six gigawatt which means we're only even if we had more high temp uh, high temp heat exchanges. We're only two thirds of the way there. That's not great. So you're really telling me that uh, we need more than six of these because, as much as we also need a bunch of condenser turbines to support them. Uh, the condenser turbines only give like 10 megawatt each, which is definitely not going to be enough. Well, it may be. We'll see. 55, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. And Sigma Bean as well, if I didn't say so. I, I don't think... I don't think we can, like, add another... So very roughly, uh, we need, like, two high temp heat exchangers per high temp turbine generator. Um, this is 
really ratioed to support three of these, and I just put four in mostly for symmetry and redundancy. Um, but so we're looking at like one more of these on each side, and we would need one, two, th uh. Yeah, we would we would need twelve high temp heat exchangers, right? I think I just heard that big ship is too small. Yeah, it sounds like it. I I was really hoping that we could maybe keep the container stress below twenty five hundred, but it sounds like that's not even remotely possible with the uh, the the power source that we're gonna need. Um, the only other power option at this scale is, uh, where is it? A singularity reactor, but singularity reactor adds a bunch of arbitrary hull stress, but also it arbitrarily slows the ship on top of that, because apparently that wasn't enough uh, to prevent us from using this lovely, compact, all-contained electricity source. No, we have to have giant, sprawling, messy power sources on our spaceships. Otherwise it wouldn't be fun. Um, yeah, I don't know how we're gonna even remotely come close to the goal here. I mean, it's not like it's one of our main goals, it's just like a it's it's just kind of like a little side bonus goal kind of thing, but still. So if I put if I cram one of these into our existing paradigm. And uh let, let's not even worry about how we're going to double our high temp heat exchangers here. Good grief. We'd need to fit two more of these in to support the high temp turbine generator. And there isn't room. There really, really isn't room. And we were already pretty close to the limit on hull stress as well, not just container stress. Andy Gaming, Phil, uh, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. What if you copy half the ship and paste it on there making a WV shape? WV? Uh, we'll see. How, how much speed did we end up with, though? You know, I kind of need to know that, uh, just for reference. Um, I'm just going to get rid of the recipe here, and we'll take this on a short joyride. I don't know, towards Calidus. Calidus orbit. Go. Uh, I just need to know what kind of top speed it gets up to with our current uh, 16 engines. And that should give us a pretty, uh, a pretty good idea of how many we need to maintain 250. We want the minimum number of engines uh, to maintain 250 speed with like 2500 hull stress. I really have my doubts this is going to be possible, but I want to try. What are we up to? Oh, we reached 232 earlier. And judging by the deceleration, it's going to be something like that. So we need, what, 18 engines at least. We're really going to be pushing it with the whole stress. Uh, oh, it's actually... Okay, there's a little bit of wiggle room for hull stress. 
Um, but yeah, it looks like it did settle on 232 earlier. Ugh, okay. E even more engines? I, I guess. Follow the same pattern up here. And then... Oh boy. Let's forget about this necessarily. Even though I quite liked the curve that we had there. And if we put this one here. And then we need the water output to... Oh my goodness. Oh, that's going to be a pain. Okay. Can we put an underground over here, actually? And then that goes there. Uh, and this would, this would have to be like this or something. So as not to cross-contaminate with the antimatter. And then... Do we have a fiver? We do now. Alright, so that would be the two high temp turbines to support that one. Uh, and then the water has to find its way back here. Still. Which is its own problem. I guess we're just going to have to sneak it, like... Nope, that won't work. Okay. It's going to have to be something like this. Uh, how many turns is that? Four? Well, that looks almost Geiger-esque, but I guess it could be worse for the footprint. There's not that much throughput of water going round and round in circles compared to, like, steam. This might work, maybe. And then get rid of... The extra... Where's our clamp? There it is. Is that still going to fit snug? It is not. It's going to stick out. I'm going to have to move the whole thing over, like... One tile, I think. Uh, but let's just get an idea of... The hull stress. If we do this before we even worry about... Oh. Wait, what? Oh, that doesn't go there. <sighs> this output needs to go to condenser turbines. Um, but yeah, before we even worry about fitting what, six more high temp heat exchanges? To support the theoretical maximum throughput of these? I, I'm really doubting that we can keep this under 2500. Evil Pla, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. So, maybe I can fit these, like, up here somewhere. I don't like it. That stays there. Give me another three. And... 
maybe this could like connect here. Kind of like that. Okay. The front's not going to be terribly smooth. And then we've got this wasted space back here. More, more to the point. I just want to slap this together and then see what this kind of stats we get. And confirm that this isn't going to cut it, more than likely. Uh, so that goes over... Actually, let's redo that. Give me a 7. And a 3. That's better. Okay. Um... I guess we'll just... Cut and paste this one tile over. Clamp would go here. And this would go here. And then walls, something like this. Okay. We're not actually going to be sticking with that, don't worry. Even if it does... Oh, come on. Even if it does turn out that uh, we can keep this thing under stats. I thought I would have to line that up perfectly to make it get rid of that entity, but apparently not. Okay. So this is going to be... Over here? Nope. Oh. This needs to go... here. And this would go here. Okay. So up to... 16 engines. What? How many is this? 16. Do my eyes deceive me? No. Uh, why did I try to alt tab to go back to this? And this is 16. I don't understand. Uh... I... 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 I Guess we gotta go up, up here. Actually, that's ten. What? How? Oh no, eighteen. Okay, I was just misreading that. Can't even do the undo levels for some reason. Okay, that'll do. So this is 18 engines. Uh, let's remove the excess floor. And the diagonals. Oh, 
all this so that we can do a container stress, ca uh, hold stress calc. What are we up to? Da -da 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 -da. Uh, 25.09, we're over. We're just barely over. Hmm. So if this looked a little more like this, something like that. And then skip all of these. Now we're down to... Sank Sank, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Are the pipes connected on the leftmost engine? Uh, probably not, no. I'm just trying to... Just trying to get together something for, a, for an estimate for whether we could even do this. That puts the whole stress all the way back down to 2444, surprisingly enough. I didn't think that would make anywhere near that big of a difference. I don't understand. It says uses 6 gigawatt at critical speed, but... When we... When we ran it before, like, I'll just do it right now. Distortion drive. Go back to Hagen Orbit. When we tested this before, um, the electric network said it wanted 4 gigawatt. It'll probably do a little bit better at for holy crap. Never mind. I was going to say it would do a little better at first until... Uh, some heat gets used up here. And or maybe the accumulators. Um, but yeah, no, as you can see, we did peak at like 4 gigawatt. It did go to 4.1. I guess we just weren't up to speed. Okay then. So yeah, apparently we do need 6 gigawatt. Um, what's our ETA? Couple of minutes. Oh, and also... E even if this was, like, close, because we still need to add high, more high temp heat exchangers to support this many high temp turbine generators. Um, you actually need a little bit more than two, it's like 2.5-ish condenser turbines to support each high temp turbine generator at maximum capacity. Uh, and we only have two each because this part was o overkill with the previous uh, design. Uh, so yeah, we'd need to add six more condenser turbines, six more high temp heat exchangers, uh, and then that would be like almost exactly six gigawatt. It would be slightly more just because the condenser, t condenser turbines exist. So we'd be looking at six times three, 18. Uh, it's not 30 gigawatt times six because... Because the condenser turbines, the, the after the first two, you're not getting 10 gigawatt for each, for the ones that are supporting the high temp uh, turbine generators. Uh, so really, it's more like um, like 25 gigawatt, gigawatt, megawatt, 25 megawatt um, per 
condenser tur uh, turbine. What? Wait, what? So yeah, uh, about twenty-five per three of these. So about one fifty megawatt, which. Which probably is far more than enough for everything but the Nexus. Probably. But I still don't like the idea of being like max capacity on the high temp turbine generators to support the Nexus. Um, but yeah, I really... There we go. Now I can jump back to the editor. Uh, I really don't think we can pull this off under 2500. I haven't played K2 or SE, but this looks sick. Just basic Factorio. Uh, K2 SE is a very, very big mod set. Yeah, that's got some cool toys. Looks asymmetrical. Oh, no. You mean the pipe thing or something else? Okay. I did say hello, Evil Plow, right? But my butterfly memory. Okay. Um, so I think... Why can't I move? Here we go. Two, th six of these on each side, huh? Maybe we do a giant V, since it has to be that big. We're going to end up with too much hull space. Like, we're already right on the edge of how much hull space we're, uh, we're allowed to have if we're trying to keep this under 2,500. I don't see how we're going to double... No, I really don't. I don't see how we're going to double high temp heat, heat exchangers on each side. 50% more condenser turbines on each side. Uh, and also keep this thing under 2500 hull stress. I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. A rug stealer, welcome in. Bask in the efficacy of modern technology? Is it not spectacular at returning the world to its natural state? A pockmarked, lifeless rock. Oh no. One sec. Yes, Nuke. You like the, the yes, yes guy in that one cartoon? Forgive me for this violence that I have allowed. You've allowed or instigated? There we go. Okay. All right, well, I guess, uh, I really hate how we have to do this V stuff to make the most of our space with the engines. But I, I guess, I guess we'll just try this, see what happens.
So we need like nine on each side, right? That's ten. I mean, we hope we only need nine on each side. Might not be enough speed. I very much doubt we could come up with some repeatable pattern. Of power plant going at this diagonal. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna scrap this. No need the no no need for the last attempt to clutter up our thought process. Now I'm too hot, really. I must be a little bit sick. Everything's too hot or too cold. And I guess we're going to need more Naquim heat pipe. There's no way we're getting eight of these to connect almost directly. Man... This is by far my least favorite part of spaceship design. Just trying to fit ridiculously unwieldy power plants. There's no symmetrical space efficient way to put these together. I'm not about to put all of these in a line, either. Oh my god. It ain't happening. What the heck did my last victory ship look like? I wish I knew the exact ratio how many high temp heat exchanges we need. Max consumption 560 megawatt. Okay, yeah. It's like almost exactly two to one. So two of these can handle 1,120 uh, megawatt. And this can handle one gigawatt exactly. So the number of, uh, like, high-temp turbine generators we would need before it stops being just 2 to 1 is, what, 10-ish? Uh, 1, uh, 2, 4, 6, 4, times 5, 20. Yeah, at 20, we can support 11 high temp turbine generators. So as far as we're concerned, it's just 2 to 1. Do the engines block each other? No, weirdly enough, this is as close as we can get them without them blocking each other. Uh, you just have to have this this tile unobstructed. wanting to sneeze. I guess if I... Uh, put these like here... We can get away with putting heat pipe uh, next to regular pipe. I don't know how far we'd have to go before the heat piping could be a problem in and of itself. I 
I really don't think this is it, Chief. Man, the whole reason... Well, not the whole reason. I, I wanted to have... Um, I, I wanted to use our nice, snug little... reactor up against the back engine's design. But it's really not going to work out like that, huh? This is five. Six, seven, eight, nine. The engines would have to go, like, to here. If we were doing some kind of reverse V thing. And then the heat pipe wouldn't be able to squeeze itself out this way. That would have to be up like one tile. And there wouldn't be room to more or less repeat this over this way. Something like that. Give me a five. Okay. And then how are we going to do our condenser turbines? Of which we need three. For each one. Well, can't do that pattern. Unless... Wait, how many engines is this? Seven. Oh, and we can't just... Repeat this diagonal up this way, because there's no way to get fuel in here. And if we make room, put the pipes here, it looks really, really weird when we put walls uh, in these two tiles over here to make it work. What a weird ship design, says the one who made one that can be built in stages over time. Nice, nice. Um... There's no way I can... Surely not. These would have to be further apart. Three frickin' condenser turbines for each of these. But surely we can come up with something kind of like this, repeatable and a bit more compact. Maybe. If we do do it like this, and then that goes there, and then these connect. Probably more like, more like that. Uh, how close together can we do these? Not very. 
Man, there's like two tiles. Okay, okay, okay. Now we might be onto something. And then we can water through here. No, not like that. Like that. It's just going to have to be that way. Okay, so this... Let me just get this right. This is water. This is high temp steam. Uh, and that is low temp steam. Okay. Okay, I kind of like this, but how can we make it fit in our ship, actually? Not so easily. I need to make a mirror version. Because of this stupid no-flip. Even though the machines literally are symmetrical. here, and that would go here. Uh, and I guess we could turn these around if we want. So if this was on this side... Yeah, we... Probably would do that, actually. Flip this. Just do that for now. Something like that. Which would mean... Uh, well, water could probably connect over here. And that theoretically maybe should be okay. So then this goes, oops, this goes up here, this goes not quite like that, please. I'm realizing that's not where water goes. I'm confused again. Water, water, everywhere. Not a drop to drink. Uh, and we're wanting... We're wanting to connect all of this water back to here somehow. Johan Anderson, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And our tours, by the way. Hey streamer, making a stream, uh, steam powered ship today. Uh, technically correct, the best kind of correct.
Yeah, I don't think we're getting much more compact than this. With the high temp designs. Um, water to here is a little bit of a problem. I could make it connect over here, but I'd have to move the heat pipes. I really hate how crappy the space underground pipes are. Even at high tech level, five is the best you can do. I guess we could continue this pattern. And then... Like that would go here. And find its way back up this way. Is one possibility. The other possibility is moving the heat pipes so that this can connect to this, can connect to this. Or moving all of this down one tile. So that can just go... not like that, please. We can get rid of all this, and this can connect here. So the whole thing has to get one tile taller, but it's a much more elegant solution than that bit of spaghetti pipe, I guess. And we've got a pretty direct flow back to the high temp heat exchanges. Alright, I tentatively kind of like this. Can we even flip this? We can. So that goes that, there, and there. And like that. All right, now build a ship around it, I guess. Yeah, I think we pretty much build a ship around the power plant instead of trying to cram a power plant into the ship. Might be the way to go. Oh my goodness, why does placing floor cause that much lag? Uh, let me just steal from here. And figure out where we're going to put this. We could at least avoid having to do some heat pipe for the first two. Probably there. Uh, these connect straight to some of the extant connection points, yes. Okay. And over here. And then we just have to somehow uh, build ship around that. So how close can we put it? Is a question. This looks better, indeed. It's gonna be a wide, wide boy. I really don't think we can uh, keep it under 2500. 
I mean, really, I should just slap something together and test that this power supply is going to be sufficient. Never mind trying to keep it that low first. Uh, but yeah, pipe is going to be something like this. Which means we can put this right up against our power plant. Is there really no way we can make this a bit more diagonal and save space? I think we kind of already confirmed no, there isn't. Uh, maybe... Maybe, maybe. Okay, I, I can pull this apart a little bit. We've got... We've got the design saved. So it's gonna be... A little bit like that. Oh. Oh, really? Okay. Are we getting somewhere? How many is this? Five. Six. Uh, how about... Seven? That's in the way. Can I move this upper tile? No. I guess I'd have to move the engines back one. That might not be that much, that big of a deal. This is five. We have room for ten. Like this. We're hoping 18 engines is enough. 20 is, I would hope, definitely enough. So something like that doesn't look too bad. But yeah, this one little corner makes us a little bit sad. Of course, this output right here just has to line up with the uh, 5 junction. So we can't move all of this over one tile. Which is a bit unfortunate because we could get away with moving this over. Uh, well, if, if, I, if I turn these two into underground pipes, we could get away with moving this over one tile. Hmm. Oh, can we push this up a little bit? Well, it depends on how we're getting our water in here. Is the thing. If I do... Maybe we could make an, a little tiny exception for this one. Well, we're not we're not going across this way with this design, right? Don't know how I'm going to get the water in, but let's just suppose that we can actually get away with this. That actually could 
could be pretty huge. Uh, there's like physically no way to get the water in through here. It would have to go around the side. Which means that the antimatter pipes are going to be in the way. I'm pretty sure the amount the engines need is really, really low, so we could actually put, like, the storage for antimatter wherever we want, honestly. Um, but yeah, I'm really liking this for a compact design. The only problem is recycling the water. Like, obviously this one could do something like that, but we can't repeat that for the other two. Unfortunately, there's no such thing as underground heat pipe, so this would have to do something like that. If we get it to flow through from here to here to here, it would be pretty convenient, except, of course, all of this is in the way. Let's get a really approximate idea Oh, right. Of how much space the rest of the ship would need to take up. Oh, we need to do the... We need to do the water outputs for the big ones as well. Which is going to be just a little bit of a problem... You know what, I, I think we really do just make, bring these back one tile. Because this could go to here, this could go to here, and this could go through here. Yeah, we, we gain a lot more than we lose by doing that, I guess. And we're just going to have to move the engines back a bit, I think. I should make make a thing of this that I can copy paste so we can see very clearly where it might fit. So that goes there, except these need to go back one again. And oh, we can't like fit a corner here. That sucks. Yeah, no, we have to move the the big machines back, don't we? Um... Makes the whole thing bigger. Not much bigger, but... Still makes me sad. So this has to have a one tile gap. So that... 
This can go here. At least our three B. Oh, spoke too soon. How many is there? Six. That'll work. At least we can have these not connecting. Like, I see how it is. Uh, what if we just do this? That's a pretty good place for that. And then... Oh. Uh, we can use undergrounds to prevent that connection. Can we copy-paste? There we go. Uh, and I guess just for the sake of consistency, we'll put that there. And then this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. I really don't like... how we have to stretch this out by two tiles vertically for each one. Especially because it's probably not going to fit very nicely with our without engines. I'd have to move this down three tiles. Uh, three tiles that I know of. One, two, three. Hold on, how many tiles is this? Five. We might be able to find a way... Nope. Okay, move it one more down. And then... Underground pipe. And then... And then be sad. Okay, good talk. I guess we could move this down one more. Which was just... Yeah. Uh, so that connects directly. But then we still need to... That doesn't help, does it? Can't find room for a corner here. Unless I move it back yet another tile. Also, can we have... What's this? Six tiles? Can we just put that there? No, it would connect with this anyway. Wait, what? Put a gap between the bottom two engines? Gap between the bottom two engines? What do you mean? I want to have the engines as tight as possible. That's part of why we're doing all this. Um, God, this is so close to being, like, just perfection. So close and yet so far. I guess if this was up one tile, this could just underground its way to the water over here. Here. And then this would do the same, but then this would have to do the same, which means we'd be adding a bunch of pipe over here. Uh, 
Uh, we can't fit... Oh, yes, we can. We can fit a corner this way. If it only goes this way. Maybe that's all right. Maybe that is just fine. Don't connect there, please. Uh, right, I forgot. Both of these line up, don't they? So I guess we're just point connected on that side. Doesn't really look like it's in the middle. There we go. So if that goes there, that goes there. That goes there. And this one's left hanging. We'd have to get the water all the way around here. And we can't underground it through this way by one tile. Mm. Wait, doesn't that mean we can push these up here? Again? If we're going to do it that way? Okay, okay, okay. Maybe... Hold on. I was about to probably abandon this, uh... This route. Once I get it to a certain point and confirm that we can't fit the engines the way I like, but maybe if we do this, it'll be close enough. So this goes here. Is that connected? It is. We need you not to be connected, please. What now? What? Because this is connected. Okay. Alright, so what does the W engine look like here? Uh, that thing is still in the way. And we would have to bring this back how many tiles? What if we put this here? Just one tile further apart than as close as possible. And then we don't have room to get this through. Good talk. So, waste one more tile vertically. If this goes here, that can go there. Maybe? Maybe. We'll see. I mean, I don't think we're going to get much better than this. So water goes back here. Water goes back here. Water over here is looking a bit sad. It's going to have to go all the way around. 
Alternatively, I could like move these up one tile. And no, that won't work because we can't put a corner here just like we couldn't put a corner here. Yeah, I think we just have to have, like, I go all the way around here, something like that, anyway. Can we fit, uh, antimatter booster tanks? Yeah, there's a few places we can just squeeze them in. probably going to be more than we need. Where should we put our water storage? Because we do have to have some. We only had uh, 50k on this version. Could put it like here. That's pretty cozy. I don't think we have to worry about the water flow rate. Where does clamp go? Clamp is looking a little bit sad. It should line up over here the same way it does. Okay. So I need to make the mirror image of this. Uh, remove, remove, remove. And I th think if we try to flip it with the engines, it'll get mad at us. Now what? Okay. Alright, alright. Let's get a rough idea of hull stress. Hardly the final version of the shape of it. Fear not. Um, so how many engines is this? Ten on each side? Certainly hope that's going to be more than we need. Does a container, uh, does a ship stress calc 
Managed to ignore what's on the outside here? I, I think so. 3,000! That is so much more than I was expecting. Also, something happened to the walls over here. Let me just double check. Uh, I'm pretty sure that number won't go down if we trim stuff on the outside. 3322.5. Yeah, no, it knows to cut that off. Okay, what if... Now we have to move everything again when we do the clamps. Let's just not worry about the clamps for the moment. What if we really, really squeeze this in? trying to rotate this to okay just just get something functional so we can do the calc Two, eight, three, seven. Uh, yeah, I don't think 2,500 is happening. I think it's not going to be difficult to keep it under 3k, but 2,500 is just out of the question. Okay. Can this fit down here? No. It might be a little awkward squeezing in the fences around this as well. Somewhat. Oh. Anyway. Now what was the what was the other little version of this I wanted to try with the power plants? I don't think we're gonna do better than this, to be honest. Have my doubts. So basically, I wanted... Power plants to be as close together as possible. Like... Like that. And we make that happen. because it might save us that much more space uh, at the back, just specifically where the pipes have to go around for the antimatter. But I don't know how we're going to... make the pipes work. Just 
Is that actually... That might save a little bit of mess. Nope. Nope, there's no way to... connect this here. And also have the input for this one. Okay. I know that water can't flow through the machine from like this side to this side, but nevertheless, having some of this be able to go straight here is going to be handy. And then... And then there's no way around having... Well, we're also going to have to have the output connect up here, right? That would have to be a 3. So that this can go here. Just like... And I guess we could put that there. It doesn't really matter. Hmm. So we've got the direct output to these, and we've got the right side output going to the main. Just like that. And that can be a 7 again. Wait, no it can't. Do it like this. I stand corrected. All right, so the only problem is water needs to go here, here, and here. Uh, and is that going to be better than what we've got over this way? Heat pipe is going to have to get out of the way of water pipe. Doesn't reach, does it? Nope. Not even if we removed this one. So this would have to go like here at a minimum, and this has to go around to this. So same thing over here, except it doesn't have to go to the left. Probably. That doesn't look terribly consistent. Also... What does this look like? So this would just go here. Something more or less like that. Compare it to what we've got.
the underground water pipe is going to be running into that engine. We do bring the final one of these up two tiles. Which... Doesn't quite help. Uh, was this it? Yeah. Let me just grab our power plant over here. That actually doesn't need to go there. Oh, this could go here. That's kind of neat. That connects, and that connects. This is probably too close, though. We need, like... Uh, like two tiles either side here. Hmm. Is there really nothing we can do about... about this? Okay, that is literally right where the engine in input is. But I guess it doesn't have to be. And then this one... could like spaghetti around like that, I guess. Nope. There we go. Okay, um, but then the water has to go around here. That's never going to be symmetrical, is it? How many tiles is this? Five, six, seven? No, it's nine. All right, so that goes there, and then, and then we're in trouble again. Well, this doesn't have to be here. I would kind of prefer it, but doesn't have to be. That's not going to work. Oh, this can connect here, because that's a niner. We're just... that's the same problem. Unless... No, that doesn't help. Holloman, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Ship looks quite different from before, but I like it so far. Indeed. Yeah, we should be able to keep it under 3k. Should be able to. Uh, 2500 is not even remotely possible. I'm pretty convinced. Yeah, no, I guess we just have to... I guess we just have to... Do some more spaghetti over here. Something like this. Oh, this one can have the antimatter booster. Right near the sides as well, so it'll refuel faster. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, okay, okay. And the Nexus goes here because we're going to share some request a chest space. Not the spaceship console. Something like this. Um, but yeah, I guess we're going to Just ditch all of that for the moment. Make this bigger again. Grab what we've got over here. And now for the task of mirroring. Pretty sure those parts were allowed to flip. Cut and what's wrong with this picture? And paste? No. I, I should just delete all this. Except for the engines. Okay. Pardon me. Is Veldak here? He is indeed. Last I checked. It's 11 p.m. Do you know where your Veldaks are? All right, that's looking pretty good. I like that. Uh, and then just get rid of all this to make sure we get this right. I swear to God, if this doesn't reach 250, I will be crying tears. That's maybe a little bit not steep enough. I just want something I can slap together for the moment. I think that's right. Yep. Okay. Is this streamline? Wow, it takes a while to check. It's like 81%. More importantly, uh, what kind of... We're just barely over 3k, so I think we can probably make it work. For the whole stress. Just a little bit over. So we basically just want to... Why is it 81% streamline? I thought... Oh, that is 100%. Weirdly enough. 
Wait, so the streamline calc changed because I got rid of excess floor? I think we'd better remove them all before we do our calcs. All right, try again. Still 3,021 stress. Uh, streamline 100%. Nexus goes here. Console goes here. And we obviously want a bit of a smoother curve over this way. I'm worried these condenser turbines are going to be exactly where I need them not to be for defenses, but we can probably uh, make these ones face forward. So that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Can we maybe... Just start with a tighter angle here. It's gonna end up looking a bit weird. Or not. I don't think we're gonna be able to squeeze in the defenses we need though. But let's see how much, how far below hull stress that gets us. Get a better idea of how much wiggle room we've got here. Something like that. Looks weird. All right. All right. What kind of stats are we looking at? Streamline should be 100%. And container stress, we've got like a whole 120 to play with. Uh, we're not going to have trouble squeezing in pylons in this case. I think we'll do something like this. I'm realizing there's a little bit of missing pipe. And antimatter resupply is going to be like this. What are you doing? There we go. Can, can you not with the... Ridiculous random wire connections, please. There we go. That looks pretty good, but now the question is squeezing in defenses. Oh, also, I was curious about... That's not going to reach, is it? Well, it looks like we might need a little bit more up here anyway. But now I don't think this can reach over here. Fine, we'll add four of them. And of course the auto wire connection has done the worst thing possible. There we go. Much better. Uh, but yeah, we can connect these like so. And I guess that actually reaches the console. Nice. In that case, can I just put this over here? Okay. 
So we're going to need some defenses. The main thing is where do the shields fit? We can always cram lasers in more or less wherever. Shield projector over here. We're definitely going to need some more space here. I'm just going to start with flipping this one around. And we could probably move it over like a tile or three if necessary. Like something like this. That's probably going to be the way to go. Something like that. Shield, projector... God, we can't even, like, fit three of these here in the usual pattern. What, how, how under are we for hull stress? 2881. Yeah. So I'm sure we can add a little bit. So if we do a quarter circle of shields over here, kind of like that. How did this have power a second ago? There we go. And then... Probably... Something like this. Maybe? Is a single layer of shields going to be enough? Certainly hope so. Mm, I'm not liking how there's going to be this blocky bit sticking out here. Maybe I don't care as much about, like, the semicircle here. At all, actually. Can I just this part back the way it was with the walls just so we can compare this and that goes there Really just can't fit this here. Couple of these. That gap of only one shield worries me a little bit. And we can't really fit another one of these here. Also, make a little exception to what we had just to fit that. Uh, also, also, laser turrets. What's our hull stress? Wait, it thinks this is... no. 
Yeah, we're still under. So we should be able to squeeze in a bunch of turrets over here. Probably add some more. Is that going to lose us some streamline? No, surprisingly. Something like this. And I guess we could put another one here. So if that goes there, that goes there. Roo, roo, roo. Uh, welcome in, uh, Kale. Thought I saw you earlier. Nope. Oh, that was Artus. Keep calm, indeed. Always. Okay, that's looking a bit like wonky does let us fit in another laser turret over here I mean can we can we smooth this out just a little bit That's a bit chunky. It's not that ba bad. But right. Do we really need this many lasers? Probably. Maybe this could just be one laser. Then that just leaves this bit that's sticking out awkwardly. It's almost... Almost okay. Where the heck does it... Is this it? Where it looks weird? Yeah, that's less bad. And I could maybe make room for one turret here. Sure. Okay, uh, let's mirror that. And we're gonna have to... Remove what we've got. We're going to need some more floor. Just a little bit. Uh, and then... God, what's this going to look like again? So this goes here. This goes here. And that just goes like that. I hope I didn't miss anything with the pipes. I just love this 
mechanic of arbitrarily not letting us copy paste flip things that are actually symmetrical. Okay. Wait. I guess I can flip this to check. Yeah, I think that's right. All right, cut, flip, paste. I'm pretty sure we got everything. All right, so what's our what's our stats? What be our stats? Twenty-eight eighty-five hull stress. And we can do what we want with containers now. We've got tons of extra space for that. Water IO can happen over here, I guess. Or here, wherever we want, really. Well, I say that, it's really just a couple of places that we can conveniently connect it. Um, and we're going to want some more antimatter storage. This is the obvious place to do it, I think. Uh, and I might just clean up this a little bit. Mid Jagus, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I like that a little bit more. Um, also, that can be three beasts. These two as well. Okay, Mr. Ray Ray, welcome in. Just fully awake and feeling like crap can relate. Bit sick. Yeah, I might be a bit sick as well. Just noticing everything's too hot or too cold. Um, we've got plenty of room to squeeze in accumulators. No room for panels. Uh, I don't think panels are going to matter with this build. One tile off, being able to squeeze it in back. Oh, here we go. There, we did it. It has some slight passive power if it's parked somewhere. How much range does this have? Quite a bit, actually. We could even put some more laser turrets in. Why not? Make it just that little bit safer. Although, with the way the laser turrets are, are always stupidly retracting the second... Uh, less than a second, the, the instant that they can't see a target, I think putting some back here probably wouldn't accomplish anything. Probably. Let's put a door. Spaceship door. Looks very awkward. That looks worse. Okay. 
Okay, hull stress. Twenty eight eighty six container stress. We've got tons of extra space. I haven't done a water container yet, but there's a few places that we can squeeze that in. I think. Pro probably. Oh, this is good. No, it's not. I mean, we could, but that does not fit the way I would have liked. Let's leave this here. And then... I was thinking we could use a large storage tank somewhere. Like, maybe this? And then that is one off, really? Come on, man. I guess that's not too bad. Eh, I don't like it. What? Where do we want to put... Our water storage. I guess I could move this pole over a bit. I could also make undergrounds there. Oh. Yeah, no, we did connect this. I think it's going to have to be in that spot that I was originally going to put it. Oh, this is fine. That is totally fine. Yeah, I don't despise this. Okay. Stat check. Container stress is still way below. All stress 2886.6. Uh, I guess we're just going to find out if the engines are enough and if the defenses can keep up. And if we can actually power the Nexus and everything else with six high temp turbine generators and the condenser turbines to keep them running at full speed. So really it's like two and a half-ish uh, condenser turbines to keep up with uh, the low temp steam output from the high temp turbine generator. So it's like 200 and, uh, 25 megawatt more or less for every three. So it's like 150 megawatt for all of the shield projectors, antimatter engines, laser turrets. I think with some accumulators that should probably be fine. Pro probably. I like that a little bit better. Uh, we should... I was going to say we should read from an accumulator. Ah, uh, sure, why not? Isn't our goal like 250 speed? So I guess I'll read from four of these. Up to 400 target speed. 
And if the accumulator charge drops enough to make that speed input drop, then we're already in trouble. Alright, uh, let's... I should have started this already. Let's pump our copious antimatter out of... out of the last version of the ship that we made. Uh, do we have storage for it up here somewhere? Prob... maybe. Pro maybe. We've got 16 times 50. Uh, 800k. We definitely don't have room right now. Let's add some storage. If I just randomly connect these over here, I'd be shocked if something doesn't connect. There we go. Cool. Might just turn this off. I don't think this is going to flow into here so quickly that it would summon a train, but I definitely don't want it to do that. 1k per second at the moment. Oh, but nope, never mind. I thought overall it was draining relatively quickly, but no. Sure. Oops. No, 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 no. Oh. What? No. Stop it. There we go. That should speed things up a bit. And some more pumps over here. Make sure we keep things going as fast as they can. I thought this would drain out a little bit faster. Let's just do that. And we can start deconstructing... I guess there's no no need to waste water either. What am I talking about? It's just ice brought up from downstairs. No, it's super not worth the effort <laughs> to preserve the water up here. Rip antimatter fuel that was in these. Maybe I could like. Kick a dollies these into position. Because that's a lot of heat we're wasting. Which trans translates back to antimatter. I mean, antimatter's pretty cheap, but still. Nah, antimatter's pretty cheap. Oh my god. Stop. Stop. Mark all of that for decon. Oops. Water in barrels? No thank you. He disabled the laser turrets as showing up as attacking slash in combat. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think that's an option. Unfortunate. We're still pumping at like 1k per second. Uh, so how much, how long is that going to take? 
About 632 seconds. If we pretend it's not going to slow down as this empties. So we're looking at like 10 minutes. With uh, 10 minutes and change to empty this out. I know antimatter is relatively easy to make, but um, at that kind of scale, it, it's a lot to arbitrarily have our base churn out. Finally managed to complete my spaceship logistics with controller this week. Nice. Only took me like three weeks. Can relate. Congratulations, well done. Uh, welcome in Mad Mike, by the way. Yeah, the scale of antimatter that I deleted by just deconstructing antimatter reactors is like 1k per antimatter canister of heat that was in there. Um, we're looking at like 10 times that for one of these containers right now. All right, I think that's as good a time as I need to take a little break. I've been needing one for a while. Let's do some LTN screensaver and some words on string in just a few minutes. Well, hopefully sooner than that. Oh, before we do, uh, how is our system looking? Apparently it's got five ships worth of copper, holmanite, iridite, vitamelange, four of beryl, and the rest. Only one of uranium and coal, which is probably fine. Um, assuming that that count is still correct which I'm a little scared to check. Uh, that is looking pretty good. Why do all these have... Did I not put water into this? I did. Why, why are all of these like 50-50 saturated? Bitum lunge on the right side is totally full. But we are able to process on the left side. Oh no, it's not going to let a ship land? Uh, okay. So that is actually stopping our spaceships right now. Um, why is this? It should be the same as the three blocks on the left. Are we not... Oh. 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 That's a good reason. That That is a very good reason. We're totally saturated on Vitam Lunch. We are totally saturated on Vitam Lunch, or at least bottlenecked, bottlenecked at the point of making Vitalic Reagents, which is fantastic as well. Uh, how many do we have here? Lots. Lots and lots and lots. I think it's about time we spam some bioscience and see how it holds up. Or see to what extent it does not hold up. More to the point. Um, but we'll do that after the break, I think. Let's get some words. Uh, let's save our... Whoa, don't load. Let's save our game real quick. Take care, West Dude. Thanks for dropping by. Have a good sleep. And... Where am I clicking? Okay. Oh, I forgot to check. 
Let's just check a couple at random. Um, copper core frags. Storage. Nope. All surfaces. One, two, three, four ships. Which is now correct, yes. Uh, barrel? I think the ones with the high account are more likely to be off. If we haven't fixed this. One, two, three, four, five. Looks good. Holmanite. So the only thing we changed was... Instead of looking for the red greater than green, that means the ship is left. We just subtract one ship when the ship gets a new job here. At the same time, we reset the central memory cell. Uh, which one was this? Holmanite. Holmanite says five. I think it said five when we checked it. One, two, three, four, five. Fantastic. Uh, Iridite. One, two, three, four, five. I think it's working. Vitamelange. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's working. I said I'd just do some random ones, but we can check this pretty quickly. One, two, three. Yes. Stone core frags. One, two. Yes. Uh, Vulcanite. is two. Coal. Atomic Nature, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How was your stream today? Why is coal off by one? Oh, no, coal's not off by one because it hasn't plus one because the ship hasn't left yet. Fantastic. Uh, and then that just leaves water and uranium. Water looks good, and uranium looks good. All of these counts are accurate. I think it's working. That's wunderbar. Alright. Stream was okay. How is your stream going so far? Uh, well, I was actually just about to take a long overdue break, but we designed a ship, uh, and we're getting ready to build it. This is it. We're trying to make the smallest possible uh, victory ship. We tried to do 2500 hull stress. I'm pretty convinced that's not possible. Because we need 6 gigawatt, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 high temp turbine generators. Uh, and the, it's basically 2.5 condenser turbines per steam generator, per high temp turbine generator. Um, it's like 25 megawatt each for these three. So like 75-ish megawatt to support all of the shield generators, laser turrets, and engines um, to keep this thing going at 250 speed with 3k hull stress. Uh, we're getting ready to test it in a little while. Um, I won't be terribly shocked if we have some power bottleneck or, or if the defenses are a little bit too weak or something like that. But we're really hoping to keep it under 3k. If we have to add more power, I don't think we can I don't think we can do it. But we'll see. If it's 2.5 each, then don't you have more than you need? Yeah, but this way all of them just have a direct uh there's no like extra piping for the low temp steam. They just go directly into here. Okay. It's going to be time for words. Let's do that in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck. Have fun. Oh. 
Hopefully it turns out great, thank you. Uh, Hitch edits, welcome in by the way. The Nugget Ship or Grimace Ship, indeed. Yeah, there's certain, uh, certain shapes that we get coerced into by how to fit engines together in minimal space uh, with SE. What's a victory ship mean? Uh, victory ship is we need to get 250 speed. Uh, let me just set this. Uh, this this recipe here describes it. Um, we need to run this recipe for 10 minutes, running at 250 speed. Um, must be 2500 plus integrity. Yeah, I don't see, I really don't see how that's ever happening. A 2500-ish integrity. Oh, we were trying to keep it below 2,500 earlier. Well, yeah, even so, I don't see how you're going to, like, do 2,501 integrity for this. Yeah, you have to... Uh, th this Nexus thing uh, adds a massive arbitrary penalty to the container stress, I believe it is, uh, to the ship, and it chews up a enormous amount of power. Um, and we need to run this thing for 10 minutes straight while flying fast in interstellar space. Uh, and if we pull that off, victory occurs. Um, but yeah, it's going to be eating 6 gigawatt the entire time. Which means that we're basically just relying on the condenser turbines, which are running off the dregs of... The high temp turbine generators lower temp steam output to support everything but the Nexus. Uh, we do have a bunch... It, it's going to be a bit bursty with the uh, lasers and shields regenerating. Uh, the engines themselves use one megawatt each. We haven't... We're not sure how much... How many engines we need. Probably 18 to 20 to maintain 250. Uh, so that's 20 megawatt right there, but since we've got like 150 megawatt from the condenser turbines, um, so we, we're looking at like 125 megawatt to support the defenses. I think that'll be more than enough, uh, especially with the accumulator. The shield projectors consume crazy amounts of uh, energy very briefly. They... The more hit points they're missing, the faster they regenerate, and the more energy they suck up. Um, but yeah, that's what the accumulators are for. Anyway, we'll be testing that when we get back. And welcome in Rick Rick Hadsley. All right. We'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Aziz, light!
Okay, how are we doing? Smashing level 5. Beautiful. Let's continue with space exploration. We may continue that later. Alright, let's build this ship. Uh, the antimatter here should be empty. No? Uh, almost. Pumping it at a rate of only 143 per second? Why? There's a pump right here. It might be a little bit faster. 1,000 per second over here. Okay. That's... Not sure how that works, actually. Oh, this one's dropping off now. Now we're actually getting down to the dregs. Alright, so if we delete these in order, it will push the antimatter to the uh, to the adjacent containers. Not going to worry about these dregs over here. And then we can actually empty this out. Uh, there's more here than I thought there would be, actually. But this pump is still... ...really slow. Getting slower by the second. Go on, get... I should really just... Yeah. Why is this not moving? Oh, because there's like 0, 0.0 in here. Cool. And... That should just about do it. Yeah, we're down to... Fractions on this side. There we go. A narrow drop was wasted. Uh, I haven't actually blueprinted this thing yet. Uh, what's the container stress? Uh, the hole stress? 2891. Yeah, 2891. 28. Nine one stress victory ship question mark and we'll just do Nexus uh, Snap two is just for the clamps. I I, don't, I think we don't need the Snap two. I think it forces the. Uh, the snap to because the clamps are there. Pac Man ghost ship, indeed. Um, what number do we want to use here? I think I can just use the same one from the last ship. And we want a constant combinator. Let's put it here. Oh, there's no space there. Uh, this might look a little neater. Okay. I didn't actually remember what settings I had on the last one. Uh, 
That's the wrong icon. There we go. And this would actually clamp next to copies of itself and merge. But we're not going to be making copies. Alright, try again. What was it? 2891? 2891. And that'll do. Alright. I kind of like the layout of it and stuff. Let's just keep it, even if it's not the final version. Where's my book of spaceships? Is it this? Yeah, this is from this playthrough. I think. It definitely is. Okay. Um, might just leave this floor here and we'll trim what doesn't belong. Ospec, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Bots go brr. Where's our floor? Is it not coming? I, I have a sinking feeling it's not coming. Spaceship floor. It doesn't look like we have any. Uh-oh. It's in the autocrafter, right? Yeah, we just need aeroframe bulkhead. I think I manually delivered that last time. To hurry things up. Okay, here's the problem. There's a trainload of bulkhead here, but... There's ever so slightly less than that, therefore... I mean, some of it's on the belt, so it doesn't know that it's here. Also, the invisible... I don't know if the invisible inserters pick it up before the train comes the first time. I don't think so. Um, but yeah, let's just set that to 90. And then... I'll make sure the train here takes all of it. This is the best we could come up with for something that would allow short trains and long trains but it has its problems. I mean, there's a few ways you can do this, but just belt feeding a couple of versions of that is the least bad that we've come up with. Anyway, that's getting taken back to the malt. We're going to have 5,000, which means about 500 spaceship floor. Do we already have more bulkhead coming up, or is there some other problem? Did I not... Hold on. D did I not do the other end to bring up bulkhead and stuff? I thought we did, but maybe not. Where would I have put it, is the th question. Aeroframe pole storage. Uh, not all surfaces. No, I don't think we have. Well, that might help. What should I search for to find these things? Uh, I guess if I search for receiver, 
we can see it in groups of four. Or not, we can see it in groups of two. Okay, so we've got th three of these. One, two, I don't know where the third one is. Here it is. Yeah, no, we have done this. Okay, there go the bulkheads. I was going to say it would have been a bit surprising if I'd... Uh, if I'd done one side of that build, but not the other. And we've already got another train load up here. Okay, cool. Here comes the flooring... And I guess we can start removing some of this. And over here as well. And we're pretty close to done already. There's a bunch of... Why does it do this? I definitely updated the blueprint. Oh, no, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Okay, cool. Why, though, is... Did I, like... Have a clamp facing the wrong way? I did not. Did I not delete this earlier? Possible. Yeah, I don't think this... Oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. Just to be safe... Pick up all of this... Alright, last bit of floor coming in soon. And why don't we clean up this rat's nest of cables while we wait. Oh, I didn't put... Uh... Yeah, I, I guess we can do it this way. Canister, right? We need a canister signal to trigger the initial input of fuel over here. I might wait till the whole infrastructure for the power plants are in place though first. Alright, we're done. Fantastic. And this go... Yeah, this is in the way. Oh no, what is this? <laughs> also, I'm realizing I think we built this in the wrong spot. Because there's no room for a clamp on the left. Okay, fine. Why don't we just decon all of this? And we'll make a bit of room here to... Uh, actually put a pump and a clamp here. And then figure out where our ship goes from there. Okay. I could have the bots pick up all of this, but 
It's going to be much less work if we just trim the fat afterwards. There we go. What other, what other random things do I have sitting in my inventory? Burr, indeed. Hikchun, the Hisag. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Leave one of the balancing conveyor belts off so that the items collect in a container. And when a train comes, both balancing conveyors are on. Leave one of the balances off. So the items collect in a container when the train comes. Turn them both on. That could work. One problem we had previously, uh, one naive attempt, was that I would turn off the belts when the train came or one of the belts um, that didn't work so well uh, also there's a problem we've already used the maximum number of wires we've used red and green on both of these so I can't connect it to uh, the logistic train stop if you connect the logistic train stop to its own logistic train stop input uh, it gives you an error it, it goes red it doesn't work so I can't detect whether we have a train here. Oh wait, yes I can. What am I doing? Except I would have to add some arbitrary thing to connect this over here. I guess I could move the constant combinators over. But then the... No, that wouldn't work. I don't know. I really wish we could compare this and this. These two containers, the amount of the same stuff without a combinator to change one of the, to convert one of them to a different signal type. Anyway, uh, let's focus on this for now. We are missing a bunch of Naquim heat pipe because I never fully automated it. Because Naquim was precious. It's not so precious now. Uh, where are we automating? Oh, let me guess. We're not. Uh, reactor. Signal. Uh, yeah, we're not automating that. I guess let's put it here. Reactor and Naquim heat pipe. Where is the Naquim heat pipe? There we go. It's up here. Actually, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, no, we've been over this. The larger Naquim heat pipes are way too big for this build, except maybe here. Is it going to look weird? It is going to look weird. I don't like that so much. So how much do we need? 52. Good lord. Uh, I guess go to like 60. I mean, it'll overshoot it anyway, but still. Let's just make this like 50. And there goes the update. We've already got... Uh, oh, am I not requesting Naquium plate here? I was not. And we need to whitelist it. 
Let's do it over here. Alright, so that should get these built. Fantastic. Easy peasy. And our ship is physically just about complete. Alright, so we're going to need some water over here. And that can go all the way over here. Let's just use one of these. And how many tiles is that? Four. Of course it is. Nine plus four is thirteen. Five, five, three. That'll do. So we're not using any uh, direct measurement of the water that's in the ship. Uh, we're simply controlling the water level in this container, which is going to equalize. Dardano, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's clean up this rat's nest once again. And also this one. Okay. So that goes here and here. Doing well, how about yourself? Not too bad, thanks. Maybe a little sick, but otherwise pretty good. And that should be all the floor that needs trimming up the front. And at the back. Sneaky. Alright, that should be all of it. Take this off my hands. I should probably bring some spare... Uh, spaceship walls and stuff, just in case. Well, I don't think we need 200. Um, I don't think you ever lose lore when you go smashy smashy. It's only if, uh, if there's floor outside of the wall. Oh, and we need some antimatter. That might be good. Was that the only pump that we had to turn around? I th think so. Fantastic. It's going to take a while to fill up. Uh, currently doing 1k per second. It's going to get slower later on, but we can store... Uh, 600k. So same as last time, 10 minutes plus the fact that it gets slower the more full the containers are. And the fluid in this game is very viscous, so it takes forever to flow through here. But we don't really need it to be full, exactly, to test the ship. So here I'm just going to do canister. 
uh, canister. There we go. Uh, so, usual pattern for ensuring that we don't waste any fuel in these containers. Containers? Well, I guess they are heat containers. Uh, we input antimatter fuel only when we output antimatter fuel. And we output antimatter fuel when accumulator charge starts dropping. And I'm realizing that might be a little bit of a problem. Because I expect the accumulators to dip sometimes. when the defenses spike because the six high temp turbine generators can just barely keep up with the nexus I mean we sh should have way more power than we need for everything else yeah I'm gonna stick to like 95% means we need to put more fuel in it might actually be bad to ever have that tiny little dip of speed. We might want to just like go all out with putting fuel into this for the 10 minute run. But for now, um, it's fine. I'll change this to 380. And it's not A, it's speed signal because we're reading speed signal from the accumulators. So if something goes really bad, we're automatically going to slow down. Before we find out the hard way. Okay, so then we input our initial antimatter canisters. Start warming up. Uh, I think it actually takes like one and a half or something to to fully heat up one of these antimatter reactors and that's discounting heating up the high temp heat exchangers, uh, the heat pipes, which I'm only a little bit concerned that this heat pipe might be too long. I don't really think it's going to have trouble going this far to get to 5k. Um, but yeah, there's also massive storage of high temp steam in these things. Water is taking its sweet... Oh. Uh, I haven't got water on the right side. Do I want to find a way to connect that on the ship? Or... No, I probably should. I don't think it's going to get terribly imbalanced if they're not connected, but I would rather not uh, risk it. Alternatively, I could have connected these up here, but I don't want to remove the lasers. Triple F in five minutes, indeed. Why is there no protective shield? Do you mean on the left? I, I switched it off. The rescue service ship is fueled and ready to fly. Don't worry, we're bringing, uh, we're bringing some walls just in case. Ready and waiting. Now I've got Command and Conquer Mini Gunners voice box stuck in my head. Alright, we don't need this anymore. Okay, so we've got our water. It's not quite filled up on the right side. Um, we're trying to go to like 80% full. 
antimatter fuel. I mean, we've got lots. It's we just don't have lots and lots and lots. Heat is taking its sweet time. Oh, we need more actually. Yep. Two minutes? Okay, Veldak. Okay, Veldak. It, it... R remain calm. Everyone remain calm. What, uh... Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. What can or should we cram into this still? A few more accumulators. I think that'll do. To be honest, the quality Triple F stuff doesn't have me hyped, so I'm hoping for something awesome like Smarter Robots today. I'm hyped for Smarter Robots anyway. Okay, let's at least wait till the water catches up. Rescue pods? Didn't they have that already? Yeah, yeah, last week. The bot thing. Did they actually release the Triple F, like, clockwork, or is this just a theoretical release time? Okay, I think once these accumulators are charged, we're probably ready to test this. It just released? Fantastic. Alright, let's have a look while the ship fills up. Okay. Torio dot I think I'm going to struggle a bit. I might not, uh, I might not read this aloud as much as usual. Why can't I see? Oh, I need to. It's forgotten which window Chrome is. Here we go. Here we go. Triple F. New, new rails. I'm never playing the game. Oh, I like where this is going, I think. I, I think I like where this is going. Whenever playing the game, we'd be reminded about two annoyances that are caused by technical limitations. How is it a technical... Okay, I can kind of imagine why I was stuck with these. Vaguely. Are they going to find a way around it? The so-called S-Bends are not... Uh, are not be possible. <laughs> Two parallel rails would need to be at least six tiles apart. Signal positions are often very restrictive. The code of the rail system accumulated some technical debt over time. Like hard-coded connectivity rules, hard-coded rail planner logic, curved rail being the only entity with multiple bounding boxes. Diagonal rails had front and back signal positions overlapping. Front and back signal positions overlapping. Oh, I... I think I get what they mean. So like in a... On a straight rail... 
the borders of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So imagine this was like offset by half a tile. Uh, then the signal, the, the position of the signal would be like here, 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 and here. And so the next piece of rail, um, like the connection points for these ones would overlap. I think that's what they're saying. Um, Bosked was more than keen to rewrite large sections of the underlying rail code, as one of the new benefits would be that we could easily define pretty much any rail shape. Oh, I like where this is going. This is a prime opportunity to think really hard about solutions. Adding an S-Bend piece sounds like a very simple change. It would just be a special piece that allows you to offset the track by two tiles, but things are never simple. At the moment, every rail can connect at most three directions, left, straight, and right. Adding a special piece would either make curves incompatible with S-Bends, or you could only build one, not both, on the same spot. I don't understand. It should be a technical limitation, unobvious to the player. I feel like... Uh, if, if they're going to explain this, they need to go into more detail. Which would probably be a lot of detail to illustrate exactly why this is a problem. But we can take their word for it. Or we'll require two more connections, S-Bend left, S-Bend right. Which means rail performance would suffer because there are more options. So it's not just signals, wherever there's pathing options that costs uh, UPS. Which means our roundabouts are a disaster, but it's fine. It gets worse because adding just a signal S-Bend special piece would not be enough. Offsetting rails by two tiles is nice, but maybe even more important is a four-tile offset. So we came to the conclusion it might be ideal to split the curve in half. Allow opposite curves to connect to each other, form an S-bend, and allowing signals to be placed in the middle. How do we put it into tiles? How indeed? So what's the solution? Um, sure. Wait, does it not have to be? I guess not. This means we kind of ran out of options to make a nice curve, or at least with this curve radius. What if we try and make it bigger? Final shape of rail curve we've settled on. Nice and smooth and doesn't need any triangles or other straight sections in the middle. New Factorio 2.0 rails. Oh, that looks a bit nicer. Curve size increase is minimal, but not insignificant. In practice, it's surprisingly not so problematic. T-junction footprint generally remained the same, thanks to the additional signal positions. So, is that not... In, in terms of where the input and output is 
on the corner. It's still exactly the same, right? Or... Or no. No, it is a little bit bigger. Then why does this look the same? What? I... What? 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 Why are we bonking? Click the middle of the picture to drag the sides, indeed. Yeah, is this not like... The ends of it are on the same tiles? But I thought they just said they had to make it bigger. What if we try to make the curve bigger? Just the smallest, ra smallest radius increment 11 to 13 tiles helps tremendously. But did, what, did, what? I, is there like a straight rail here? No. Oh, there's a bit more, there's like some straight rail in the middle. Yeah, this isn't the smallest possible curve uh, in current version. Okay. So yeah, I was, uh, you know what's funny is the number of times I've said my one regret with this version of the rail blocks with SEK2 is that we can't quite, we're one tile off fitting a huge storage tank here uh, at the pick, -off, pick up slash drop off areas. So we can't quite put uh, one pump connected on each uh, fluid wagon straight into a huge tank. But if, uh, if the minimum size of a roundabout had been slightly bigger, then we would have stumbled into getting that exactly right. If only it had happened a little bit sooner. It's fine. Now this this looks great. I, I really like this. Um, what's all this then? Our toy trains are getting to choose from a whole lot of different rail pieces to run on. What? Oh, right. Yeah, we've got some different angles here. Very nice. The new curves and half diagonals allow... Half diagonals, that's kind of a weird way to put it. it they, they mean anything between, like, the cardinal directions and 45 degrees. Much more nuanced shapes, so getting through narrow gaps is much easier. Very cool. Building four or six tile gaps between track directions is now even more interesting to decide between, with two tile gap now being possible at all. Nice. There's enough candidate signal positions, even when times get desperate. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So nice. You can also notice that the rail segment visualization has been changed. It now shows signal directions. Oh, true. So in other words, yeah, this right here is a verboten. You, you can see from the yellow pointy uh, that they would be trying to go uh, only one direction through this. Like they can go this way, but then they have to stop. They can go this way, but then they have to stop. That's going to help a little bit for people trying to wrap their heads around uh, rail signals as beginners. I imagine that's going to make it, like, 
hundred times easier to learn signals the first time. Because you can just read it. More rail signal orientations? Oh, you mean the positions, or...? That intersection looks a bit cursed, but it's nice that it's possible. I, yeah, I mean, the point is that it's possible, right? Actually, yeah, the directions of the rail signals has always been way too vague, and now that'll help a lot, indeed. There's enough candidate signal positions. Yes, yes, yes. So many signal positions that junctions with two tiles in between are possible now. Even if your Factorio friends have gotten used to 32 by 32. Curves look smoother as well. Speaking of which, the bigger curve radius means that with four tiles between directions, now the minimal convenient blueprint module size is 32 by 32. We've increased the big electric pole range to 32 to go along with this. Nice. Speaking, uh, wait. If you rework an entity, you better also rework its remnants. Yeah, it would look very weird if the bite is munched on a bunch of rail. Uh, and like the... Like, imagine if all of these new pieces had just like the old the old rail debris kind of chunking left and right of where the diagonals go. As a bonus, they also have fuzzy edges. Don't look as out of place as before. What if I woke you up from your dream since the beginning of the post and told you this is reality? What? Does that mean they're implementing it already? The graphics of the new rails are something I'm particularly proud of. Many parts are thicker. So... So when is this live? New rails are coming as a free update to Factorio 2.0, even without Space Age. As you can probably guess, uh, the new rail curves will be incomplete, uh, incompatible with the old ones, of course. Alright, well, that's definitely to look forward to. Uh, 11 out of 10, no notes, absolutely beautiful. Just lovely. Rip old blueprints? Yeah. It means you get to design new ones. Actually, yeah, old ones might still work. Well, they will accept for where the curves are. And they'll probably just... The, the curves will probably disappear from them or something. Or it'll just... Hmm. I wonder how they're going to handle that. I would think you would just import an old blueprint and it would just bring in everything except for the curved rails, which are not valid anymore. Or maybe the curved rails would be positioned in a way that doesn't make sense. Kind of like, um, okay, not, not, not kind of like this, but, um, when we make a blueprint of, like, this block here, because it's got, uh, spaceship clamps in it, for some reason, if we try to do the usual thing where we're allowed to rotate it, um, snap to 86.25.1. Uh, it does some really weird stuff with the curved rails. Is it actually just the curved rails that do that? 
No, yeah, maybe. Actually, what the heck is this? What the heck are these diamonds? I, I don't know how... Um, I don't know how it's making these diamonds where the roundabouts were. And then the roundabouts are like offset. As well as messed up. Actually, I guess they're not that messed up. Whatever, it's weird. Oh, I think those diamonds actually are part of the roundabouts. Yeah, they kind of are. So it's just moving all of these curved rails. That's weird. Oh, the tracks are simply not there, indeed. Zora, welcome in. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. We're just about ready to test uh, the next iteration of trying to do a small victory ship. We've got water, we've got fuel, we've got not as much heat as I would like to see. Got to get it above 5k uh, before we let the automation do the rest. And, yeah, uh, I think we're ready. You know what, I kind of kind of want to put this here. That feels a little bit better. All right, uh, 2926. When did our hull stress go this much higher? It's only, like, 30 or something, right? 2891. Yeah, that's really quite a small change. I think we can probably ignore that. All right, let's, uh, let's see how it goes. Let's go to Calidus. Calidus orbit. Wait. How fast do you think it'll be with, what is it, 20 engines? Yeah, 20 engines. And will we have enough power? Non-45 degree rails, am I understanding that right? Yes, there are. Or there will be. Welcome in, Vavasan. Good to see you again. And Solburn. Lucifer, Senpai. Midden, Jetro, if I didn't say so. Maxine. And hitched. Alright, what kind of speed are we getting? Did, did I just see the speed dropping at first? Accumulators, oh my goodness. Oh, I think the steam turbines... No? This one here hasn't... Isn't, isn't doing its thing. We've barely got 5,000 heat over here. And it's not giving us that much power. We're supposed to have 6 gigawatt, apparently, to support this at 250. But it's not happening. Huh. Now, why is this? Is it really just the length of the heat pipe? I don't think it would be. I mean, it could be. No, it's climbing. Five, 5,011. Now it's dropping again. Why, why is it dropping again? It seems like this is getting faster. 
That's kind of weird. Why is it taking so long to saturate? If it is saturating. I think it's probably just heat pipe mechanics. I think we just have to wait longer for more heat. Maybe? This one's up to 5043 now. It's really the end of the pipe that matters though. Why does it reach a certain amount and then start dropping? And then it's hovering at like 5k6. Does this not... Does this consume when it's at 5k or... Yeah, it is consuming. 29 per second. Hold on, hold on. So these ones up here... This one's consuming constantly. Because it's getting the water directly from here. This one's consuming, like, most of the time. Because two of these are a little bit more than it takes to support one of these. You can see the consumption dropping to zero and then back up to 255. So if we have, like, I don't know, 210 each per second from these two, then they're working. Uh, these two, judging by the water consumption and the output, are uh, pretty consistent. This one has no steam in it, uh, as you can see as well. Also, yeah, um, these ones are saturated on steam. We've reached our destination. How fast did we get? Uh, it doesn't show me right now. That's really annoying. No, here, there it is. 200... 217, is that all? Okay. I hate to say it, but I think the heat pipe might be a significant variable here. Um, but yeah, let's let this thing completely saturate, not just with steam, but with heat all the way to the end of the pipe. That's going to take a little while. Using more heat than you're generating? I, Well, the math says no, but it gets bottlenecked in the heat pipes. I don't know if this is enough heat pipe for that to be a problem. I did uh, mention earlier that Maybe that would be an issue, but I didn't really think so. So, like, even though we're consuming basically no uh, energy right now, a mere 28.6 megawatts. Good grief. Um, we're generating, like... Uh, Well, we don't actually get neighbor bonus. Okay, maybe I need to get rid of the uh, fuel preservation, uh, the fuel management on this one. No, we're not actually consuming right now. They all consume simultaneously, so we do get the neighbor bonus. So, like, if I force this to input, they're all giving us 1.2 gigawatt each. And we're only consuming 28.6 megawatt. Wait, 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 wait. Oh no. Oh no. That's a bottleneck I didn't even consider. Because I haven't had to build out this far before. Uh, so 1.2 gigawatt times 4 is 4.8. We need more 
bloody antimatter reactors? That's ridiculous. Oh my god. Why is this thing so heavy? I don't think... Uh, I'm skeptical whether we can do this below 3,000 now. Below 3,000 hull stress. Because how the hell am I going to fit... Like, like, putting aside how tight everything is already, and the arduous process of, like, redesigning this, um... How am I going to find room for, like, 6x2 antimatter reactors? I guess I could manually feed them. Does the heat from the top two reactors go through the bottom two? Yes. Yeah, the reactors exchange heat. Just like heat pipes. How is the matter reactor compared to the NAC? Compared to the NAC? Oh, you mean, uh... You, you mean these things? They're friggin' great. Uh... Two gigawatt each. The... You only need to fill these with matter. Uh... You, you could, they cost some Naquium up front, but you can recycle them forever. And at full capacity, each Singularity Reactor consumes, uh, 1,500, uh, matter per, I think it's per minute. Per minute, 1.5, yeah. It's 1,000 matter to recharge a Singularity fuel cell. Um, and they consume 1.5 per minute. Uh... And you get 80% efficiency, which is 2 gigawatt. Um, however, they're no good on spaceships. There's a massive, massive arbitrary penalty for them. Not just in hull stress, I think it is. Uh, one or the other stress. But also, above and beyond the uh, stats on... The stress, the integrity, they just arbitrarily slow down the ship on top of that as well. So they're not an option. Uh, then they're not an option for the victory ship. If you want to do some simple ships uh, that you don't really care that they're fast or not, um, then you can absolutely slap some singularity reactors in there. Yeah, we tried it. Welcome in Monster, by the way. How much heat do we have at the end of the heat pipe? 9.3k. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, we know the answer, but it's more than enough to test our hypothesis here. Let's just fly towards, I don't know, Shattered Skies. Damn it, I was really happy with this design. And it should be able to manage for a time. Um, but then it's going to like run out of heat faster than we're creating it. Actually, it's going to manage for a lot less time than I thought. We're already, already down to 8800 heat. At the end of the Naquium pipe. Oh. Yeah, it's actually like the same temperature as the reactors. So it's not having trouble getting heat to the end of the Naquium pipe at all. It's just that we have consumers. I guess the Naquium heat pipes have more capacity or something than the regular heat pipes. It's not just that they go to 5k. I, I, I imagine there's some kind of... Um... It's kind of like the steel pipes having a larger capacity than the vanilla pipes, which 
because of how Factorio fluids work, uh, gives it more throughput. But yeah, this is 6.6, .6, this is 6.9. But yeah, we're not even going to get out of the solar system, I don't think. We're halfway out. Almost. But yeah. What speed are we getting? 240. It's not even fast enough. Twenty engines isn't fast enough. How fast were we with uh, sixteen? I think it was like two thirty-ish, or was it more like two twenty? I imagine we need to add two to four more engines. Assuming that we can keep the hull stress about as low. But that might just be still insufficient. So how how the heck are we going to fit 2x3 reactor? Probably by putting it, like, up here, maybe, for example. Or we could have more of a diamond shape, with the engines going all the way back here. More space for the reactor. I mean, we're gonna... we're gonna fly way past the... way past our target for hull stress, I think. If there's a way to make a victory ship with within the limits of 3,000 hull stress. I don't know what it is. Welp. There it is. Heat is running out. And it actually runs out very, very quickly uh, once we get there. All right, let's go back to Hagen Orbit and back to the drawing board. Seemed like the defenses had no trouble holding up, though. Like, not even close. I guess if we had two giant rocks, like, right here at the same time... Uh, they'd probably get through. We probably don't need this shield right here, but it basically doesn't cost us anything. Can't you do without the shields? Uh, not really, no. But also... What you have to understand is the cost, the energy cost of the engines and the lasers and the shields uh, is trivial. Absolutely trivial compared to the Nexus. See that orange line at the bottom? Uh, okay, see, see those, see that cluster of lines at the, that, that does not help. That cluster of barely visible lines at the bottom of the power graph was everything other than the Nexus. Uh, it's literally less than 1%. So we need 6 gigawatt for the Nexus. And we had like 150 gigawatt to spare for everything else. Engines cost 1... Uh, sorry, megawatt. Uh, engines cost 1 megawatt. Uh, shield projectors, if they're idle, cost 1 megawatt. I think. Let's see. They say, uh, if you point at them like here, it says 
Max consumption, one megawatt, but that's a flat-out lie. Min consumption, one megawatt. Yeah, they're always consuming at minimum one megawatt. Uh, when they recharge, they consume energy ridiculously quickly. Um, the more hit points they're missing, the faster they recharge and the more energy it costs. Uh, and the lasers, of course, uh, well, in K2, it's a minimum of 100 kilowatt. Max is four bloody megawatts. Um, but that's not that much on the scale of all of this. Were the reactors working? There was a red warning on them for a long time. Yeah, that's because we were not putting more fuel in deliberately. Uh, basically, uh, if we keep putting fuel in, it gets wasted. Um, but we might even end up doing that with this ship, just because we don't want any downtime. Um, but what we normally do with nuclear reactors and with this is wait until we detect a dip in the accumulators, uh, and then we take out... Uh, the used up fuel cell, and only when we take up take out the used up fuel cell do we put in another one. And that way we put all these back in in sync. We only ever put in one fuel cell at a time. Um, and while the fuel cell is in here, it gets completely consumed whether we need it or not. So right now it looks like we're going to waste some of the antimatter that we put in. Uh, I don't think so, actually. But yeah, suppose this red bar was here. Uh, it's going to go all the way up to 10k temperature. Uh, and then it's just going to keep consuming fuel. Um, so it's going to waste, like, it's a thousand antimatter per canister. Um, it, it's not a trivial amount. Um, but yeah, while they're flashing like this, it just means there's no fuel in them. But they still might have a ton of heat left over that is being consumed. Oh, and heat doesn't, uh, like, dissipate. It, it's, it's draining out here because it's uh, warming this thing up. But heat... In this game is a resource just like just like water for example uh it doesn't just disappear it doesn't like dissipate over time or anything you can confirm this by like putting down putting down a heat pipe giving it a bit of heat let's say 123 degrees whatever uh, come back, like, like, separate it from your nuclear reactor or whatever. Come back a hundred hours later, you'll see that that temperature hasn't changed at all. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, ha gonna have to go back to the drawing board again. I was so pleased with this layout too. I mean, look at this. Look at how compact we managed to make this, relatively. Can't we do the research for more hull stress? Yeah, but I want to, like, I, I, I want to find the minimum research that you would need to win. And apparently 3,000 is not it, because I really don't see how... I really don't see how we could add, like, two antimatter reactors, two to four engines, uh, and still stay below 3,000 hull stress here. But I think this set of... Power plants is probably sufficient. Also, 
I, I was briefly considering... I forget how you figure out um, how much low temp steam this puts out. Maybe the rate calc is correct on this. Um, here it is. Steam 415 degrees, 375 per second. Uh, and these consume 60... 66.6 .6 per second. Right? 375. So we need 5? That doesn't sound right. I don't think we would have gotten as much power as we were getting if we were bottlenecked on output steam from the big ones. Hmm. Because of the space they need, could replace it with engines. Because of the space... The shields need... Well, the thing is, the engines have to be even further... Horizontal, right? So we're expanding out to like here or here or he here, which means the walls are going to be like, like that, uh, which means we're definitely not staying below 3000 hull stress. You can layer the engines and still have them work full power. Yeah, that looks so naff. What was I doing a second ago? Oh yeah, I was trying to figure out how many condenser turbines we need. Rate calc says these produce 415 degrees... Uh, sorry, 375 low temp steam per second. And this apparently consumes 66.6. .6. But that can't be right. I'm sure we've tested... and confirmed that we can keep this running indefinitely uh, with only three of these. Steam at... I really wish it would let us change the temp before this actually appeared here. Exactly 5,000 degrees. So if this accumulates steam to the point where this can't output... Oh, we need to output the... Uh... No, we need to consume the electricity. Here we go. Mode, input, all of the gigawatts. There we go. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, we're not accumulating steam here. If we have two of them... Wait, what? It's probably in the buffer here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is accumulating. It is accumulating, right? Why is the second one so slow to... Huh. Don't tell me we only need two of these. Wait, 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 wait. So one of these absolutely will accumulate steam, yes? Accumulate low temp steam and this is going to stop. It's taking longer than I thought it would. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, the pipe is filling up. And this thing's not going to be able to output the low temp steam. So once its output buffer fills up, this is going to crash. Well, it's not going to crash. It's going to be bottlenecked by this one. And then if we connect this back up. I, I can't tell if this is bottlenecked. Apparently we're getting a gigawatt, so it doesn't seem to be. Okay, wait. If I cut this off, does it tell us that we're getting less than a gigawatt once this fills up? Steam would be accumulated faster when not all the power generated is being consumed. Yeah, of course. But we're trying to check that it does uh, accumulate while there is too much demand. Okay, so here we should see... Oh, it, does it actually just still show it as like one gigawatt as if this thing is running at full speed? What? No, it shows production. What is going on here? We're clearly bottlenecked on... Yeah, we're, we're bottlenecked on outputting the low temp steam. And yet, Power Graph says it's totally fine. I don't get it. I think, uh... I think this is one of those instances where... Nine... Ten. We need ten by ten of these, right? Oh, this gives how much power? Ten megawatt? So we need like two more. Fifty... A hundred and two. So that should be... I don't think it was some weirdness because there's an infinity accumulator. It really seems to be managing one gigawatt. I don't understand. The satisfaction should be dropping. Oh, hold on. It was the internal high temp steam. It hadn't run out yet. Now we're going to see some drops. No? But the... Oh, the input hasn't run out. But it's... No, the input is saturated, but... But we're not doing anything with it when this is full. Ah, finally! Yeah, I forgot. There's some invisible something or other in there. Like, there's some invisible buffer or something. It takes a while to see this result. So now we're seeing that the power is actually bottlenecked. God, that's sneaky. Yeah, judging by the area under the graph, I'd say we're getting like... 75%? So two of these should be more than enough, right? This input was already full, so it shouldn't take as long to prove here. Um, these things give 10 megawatt, yes. Condense 
Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. Why does it not say... How much power these supply? I never noticed that. It just... Steam turbine says max output 10 megawatt. Condenser turbine just doesn't say. But you can see it here, 20 megawatt. I think the reason this is yellow is literally just because of the power, like the 9.38 kilowatt being consumed by the lighted pylon. Let's prove it. No? Okay, now it's green. So if it's exactly... Wait, what? If it's exactly dead on, it doesn't update whether this is yellow or green, apparently. If we put in an accumulator, we should see it hover at exactly a certain amount of charge. There it is. So we know we're spot on here. Alright, well, it turns out we only need two condenser turbines for each of these. Or more accurately, we need like one point something. Uh, like, like 1.2, 1 1.3. 1 It was like 70-something percent area under the graph, right? When we were bottlenecked on... Uh, low-temp steam output. Oh my god. It just has to accumulate 1.8k reserve high temp. Before it reaches the limit on this. And then presumably we have to wait through some weird invisible buffer again, even though I just placed this. I think two would manage with full power draw. Yes, but when in a spaceship that has random power draws to use lasers and regen shields, uh, it'll back up much faster, so I found three to be a safe bet. We'll use like five for two turbines. Yeah, well the reason I'm revisiting this is I'm thinking we can get away with fewer condenser turbines, but then we're basically using the regular condenser turbines to power the shields and everything. So it's kind of a bit sketchy to reduce them. But we probably do have more than we need, like significantly more. I wish I could pause. Oh, I can pause it, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. It, this is almost exact. Or it might actually be exact. It's it, like almost exactly two thirds satisfaction. So we need 1.5. 1.5 condenser turbines per high temp. Uh, we've got six of these, so nine. Six to nine. Let's see if that's true. Um...
So we got six versus nine of these. Should be fine to just pipe it like this. And void like so. Uh, and then we need... I'm pretty sure it should be okay to just use infinity accumulators for the consumers. I think the weirdness was just the buffers, the invisible buffers in the high temp turbines. Uh, so we're looking for... Six gigawatt, right? And then some. Say... I don't know, 50 megawatt on average? What's the problem here? Oh, I forgot to set this to input. There we go. Looks like we're slowly gaining an uh, accumulator. So I guess I can increase this a bit. That is going down. Okay. 6.1. Well, it's clearly not actually 6.1 because... We're draining 6.1, and it's going down. Uh, 6.09 looks to be pretty steady. I can't see the decimals beyond that the accumulator has 66.6 .6 megajoules. But if it's going up or down, it's going so slowly that we can't see it move. I never actually thought I would just guess the exact amount that we're getting here. Oh wait, no, of course, because this is nine. Yeah, no, that is exact. I, I meant to do that. Uh, but yeah, that sh should be able to run indefinitely if our... Well, no, I did... It, it was a little bit of rough math because I was looking at the uh I was looking at the graph which doesn't give us super exact figures um, but it looked like it was exactly 1.5 condenser turbines per high temp uh, so that means we can reduce our condenser turbine count by like 50% just for the symmetry and to make sure we've got enough, I, I might just add one so we'd still have ten. Which means we can reduce, or we can have four fewer condenser turbines on each side. If we can have four fewer condenser turbines on each side, add two antimatter reactors somehow find space to fuel them, probably put them up here, maybe, and I don't think the heat pipe is a problem, and then add two to four engines, this might be doable. If it's stable, you could also get rid of the accumulators. Uh, no, because the shields, the shields eat energy very, 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 very suddenly. Uh, let me find a ship to demonstrate. Here's one. Is it going to get hit by rocks, though? I think we made this one a bit slow. Um, 
Core egg hall. These ones are all at Hagen. Okay. This one only has shields as defense. Uh, so see the... Uh, see how tall the spike is? And this is just from hitting little rocks. Whenever the shields lose hit points, uh, the more hit points that are missing, the faster they're recharging. Uh, and when they get hit by a big rock, that spike just goes almost straight vertical. Uh, it's very extreme. That's why we need accumulators. It looks like a 100 megawatt spike at the most. Yeah, that was with tiny rocks. I think it might work with maybe one or two. Uh, maybe, but it's a pretty trivial, uh, like, hull stress cost for the accumulators. Like, we might remove a couple if it's the difference between being just over the line or not. But it's not going to be the thing. Alright, so how do we... Oh, by the way, I wanted to... A, I wanted to check what our bottleneck on research is right now. There isn't one. It's just really expensive. Okay. Uh, and B, I wanted to switch to... Whichever infinite resor uh, research it was that was consuming bio. I think it was must have been... Rod. Mining prod. Yeah, here we go. Because uh, I want to see where our Vitamelange bottleneck is. We've added a lot of infrastructure to support bioscience. Uh, a lot of Vitamelange throughput back here. But I suspect... Uh, if we don't need even more of this over here, then I suspect we at least need to add a few machines, uh, to make Vitalic Reagent, which is a good problem to have. Um, but yeah, we'll see how fast this drains out. Bio 4... Reduction pack four. That is very spiky. It was actually more than ten hours ago that we last produced bioscience. That doesn't sound right. Didn't we use it all up not that long ago and then let it accumulate? Weird. Well, we'll see how it goes. Let's jump back into the editor. I'd really like to make this into a diamond, but I think we're just going to have much too much uh, hole to even dream of staying below 3k if I do that. You get a bit of a bonus for like, I think it's up to 10% uh, empty space. So some of it's free, but, and I know that we've, we don't have much empty space right now. But I'm pretty sure if we do this, it's not going to work out the way we want. So just how, how much worse does this get?
from about 2900 to... Holy crap. That added like a thousand. That's like... F five to ten times more than I thought. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to not be afraid to scrap a bunch of this. Let's just get rid of... Uh, we're looking for five on each side, right? We could do it like this. Let me have to go around here anyway. Oh, do we? And no, these are all connected. So maybe not. I mean, okay, this has to find its way over here. Uh, why don't I just do this? That's much better. That's much better. And we can probably move these back a bit. Not going to worry about the circuitry for now. If I make this underground, that probably doesn't really help. Actually, it might just be enough. Okay, no, that, that, that one would not have access to inserters. So we could have, like, requesters, actives, and requesters and actives. Something like that. And then heat pipe would have to be like this. I have my doubts after what we saw that the heat pipe is going to be a problem, but this definitely makes it more likely. Oh, we need the high, uh, low temp steam over here to find its way into... That's not going to work. We need all of these to be connected. If we're going to do it like this. Or just put another one of these here. If we need... Uh, It's going to be like 1.5 for these two, and then 2 for this one, unless... Unless we do something. How am I supposed... Hmm. The trouble with this layout is we can't connect the low temp steams. So I probably have to go back to the back to the drawing board again. Really? Okay. Low temp steam uh, of the top one doesn't get. Yes, yes, yes. How can I have them all connected? I think we have to make a little bit more room, like here. I, I think we should let go of what we've already got from the last design. And be more willing to start from scratch. 
more or less from scratch. We can definitely keep some of what we've learned here. So... If this goes here... And this goes here... And then water has trouble getting out. Okay. That doesn't fit. I guess I'd have to move this up a little bit more. It still takes up slightly less room than the last one. Yuck. Surely we could do better than this. Uh, or not. That's a possibility. Just underground upward from the lower section till you can go left. Till you can go left. I'm not following. Can we fit the Nexus like here? Oh, really? Oh, really? One off? Wait, 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 wait. No. <laughs> no. Come on. How is that pipe in the way? Look at this. Come on now. One off, indeed. Okay, I think I want to really rethink this. Like, let, let's just remove all this clutter from our brains. And see if we can't... We're probably going to keep this much. Can I not move that over one tile? This part might not be necessary. I don't know that that much water comes out. Let's mess around and find out. Because that is tight. If I move these back one tile each, then we could literally just have water go here. Which maybe ends up saving us some space. In a different way. Not, not there. Oh right, we can't put it there. Because this connects. Rumble. Uh, in that case, it's probably going to be something like this again. But 
putting five of these on each side. Where should we do that? Also, we need the water to find its way back. So I'm going to tentatively say that this is going to be the same shape as what we had previously. Water goes through here? Yeah, but then there's no room for this. Unless... Well, I guess that space would be kind of... I guess that could contribute to the empty space for the hull bonus. So this goes here. And this goes here. And can we do the same thing down this way? Yeah. Yeah, we need the low temp steam to all connect. So this needs to go up one. But then... Ugh. Really? We can't make it go up one tile or two tiles because it's going to connect with the water output from the high temp. So it would have to be like here, which is not good for our hopes and dreams. I'm trying to limit this. Hmm. Well, what if I just move this one here and this one would have to be way over here? Nope, nope, nope. There we go. Well, that's going to have to be undergrounds, otherwise that would connect. All right. So that's high temps. Now this doesn't connect. <sighs> wait. Wait, 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 no. Actually, maybe. What if just for the one on this side, it goes straight into here? Which we can't do with these two. And then this one doesn't have to output its water to go all the way back around. Which is what we were doing here as well. Don't remember consciously deciding that. Um, and then... So this doesn't need to be here. I'm sure we could put like a fiver here or something. Then again, I'm sure undergrounds will give us just that little bit more hull stress back. And then we can't do the same thing here because these two need to have water output. This was this one already does. And we want to squeeze the other three in here somehow, right? 
if it's even possible. Which it's not. Maybe if I put this one tile further out. That's not very consistent. But it might be an okay overall shape. Alternatively... We could just do it like this, if we don't mind that little gap over there. There's already like a gap over here as well. That doesn't look so bad. So low temp steam goes here. High temp steam just goes directly from 2 to 1. Water goes directly here. Out around here. It'd be nice if we could underground this up here, but we can. No, we can't. It's six tiles. May as well put this back. Talky talk talk. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so we're going to do like, I guess this is going to save us a little bit of hole stress. We're not going to like fit anything here though. And then this goes back here. That seems pretty good. Can we steal from ourselves? Or the heat pipe layout? More or less. That doesn't line up the same. And I guess this goes here. Uh, yeah, that's probably more or less like that. Wait, no, we don't need pipes for this part. Because this one outputting to these two directly is fine. We only need the water to go around this way. A, because we need the water from all of these. And B... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't think it's going to matter that... Well, no, hold up. This needs to be connected to the main water network anyway, doesn't it? If only for the initial input, but also I think there might be some drift. This would slowly run out of water. Yeah, even if, uh... Even if this two-thirds can keep up with all of this for the water output. Okay. Which means this is going to have to go here. And it's going to look something like this. New generator design? Indeed, indeed. Okay. That looks pretty good. Um, let's just get rid of all this. 
Not too worried about the engines either for the moment. And it was this one. And we're going to want... Well, what are we going to want? It was here, wasn't it? Just enough room for the chests, for the middle ones. Is that a significantly smaller blue, uh, footprint? Compared to the last design. I think that's it. I mean, yeah. The condensers actually stick out significantly less. We might have trouble with the antimatter pipes. But I think overall it's going to be a significant improvement. Iterative improvements, indeed. So if this goes here, well, we're already in trouble. We, we couldn't quite fit a nexus here, could we? If I have to move the uh, antimatter engines back by one tile, it might be a win because we'd save some space over here. Alternatively, we could probably put it up the front. I don't know that those lasers were doing that much. Or we could find room for more lasers anyway. Uh, but yeah, the water situation over here is a bit of a problem. And... We really don't have a whole lot of room to maneuver with the heat pipes. Also, we need more engines. Uh, at the very least, we need two more, but I doubt two more is going to cut it. So what if what if we started like here and then this doesn't fit? Good talk. Well, this clearly doesn't fit. You added the reactors, but not the... Generation? Generation. What do you mean? Rowan, welcome in. Can we, like, underground through here? Yes. Does it help? Probably not. Especially because we need to go here anyway. Good, good talk. Hmm. Also... Oh, we're one off from that connecting. 
Okay. You want to be cringe about it? It's going to have to go somewhere like here. And then the antimatter... Well, we know we're going to have to move this anyway. At least we're pretty sure. I don't see how... Moving the heat pipe would do anything here. Don't you need four more high temp steam gens to go with the additional two antimatter reactors? Uh, no. The, uh... We got 560 megawatt times... Well, uh, times 12. It's actually like 500 megawatt times 12. Because we're bottlenecked on the high temp turbine generators. Is 6 gigawatt exactly. 6 gigawatt exactly. Uh, yeah, 6 gigawatt exactly from the high temp turbine generators. But they also spit out some low temp steam. Which gives us the power for everything else. Um, the antimatter reactors themselves. Uh, what was it? 1.2 gigawatt times 4. We had 4.8. And we're going to have 7.2. Uh, that's why we have 6. With the neighbor bonus, they give 1.2 gigawatt each. Actually, the ones in the middle are going to give us even more. But that's neither here nor there. It just means we're going to be a bit more fuel efficient. And we'll have a bigger, like, heat battery here. Before the accumulators start draining. Could I... Uh, I hate that the antimatter engines don't have, like, a middle tile sometimes. I think it's only the rocket engine that does. No, Ion does, and Rocket does not, so I got it backwards. So anyway, I added one Ion engine in the middle. Maybe I could move the... Uh, the reactors... No, I don't think I can. Okay, maybe. If I move these up a bit... Can we make this fit? We've got plenty of space for this one. And plenty of space for this one. That shouldn't be an issue. Right? put this like here. It does have to be, uh, if not down here somewhere, that would have to be here, or here, or here, or here, and so on, uh, because of the way the connection points are on the reactors. Uh, and we need to make sure we have at least two tiles where there can be a chest and inserter sticking out for the middle one. So it can't be here. Uh, it can be here. It's going to look something like this. And we can be a bit more consistent with our chests. So these two, these two, and these two. So that means engines uh, I mean technically those bits don't need to connect but I 
Okay. Let, let me just tidy this up a bit. I want the smallest possible footprint. So this would go... We'd have to go all the way back here. No, it wouldn't. We might be able to make a little exception. Let me just get rid of this, actually. I'm pretty sure this part can't be solved. Like, this could probably do something a little bit different. This has no way to get through here. And then, I don't know what the hell we're thinking of over here. I guess the heat pipe could do something like this. Just barely. It's going to be a little sketch. But... Okay. So move all that back one tile and see what happens. How much space does the Nexus need? Again, one more tile. As T-Hacks, you have big foot, big footprint, need to walk on hands, small footprint. Yes. Um, so if that goes like here, and this would have to go all the way back here, and... I guess water could just do this. Something more or less like that. And maybe Nexus up here. Fill this space with console. Uh, we're not recycling chests to feed the Nexus, but our hull stress is way bigger than our container stress now, so I don't think we're too too worried about uh, container stress at all now. Okay, so is that the basic design? Let's see what kind of numbers we get if we fill this out. We'll not worry about the defenses just yet. I just want a rough outline and see what kind of uh, old stress we end up with. So we're going to put our clamp here, which luckily lines up. Oh, wait, we still have only 10... Uh. Okay, minimum, minimum we need one more engine. Master Logan, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It's going to look so weird. Uh, but yeah. Um, it's not going to be exactly 
45 degrees. But this will do for just a little, just a little test. Must be placed on spaceship flooring. I wonder what, oh, the console. No? What did it not let us place? Okay, get rid of the stuff that makes us say, this can't be flipped, how dare you? Cut, flip, and paste. A little bit of floor missing over here. No big deal. And one more up here. And we didn't put a clamp in. Let me guess, alignment is off. It is. That probably is valid, but I don't like it. Can we move all of this over? And this should fit on the other side. Okay. That is technically valid. Let's see what kind of hull stress calc we get from this. Oops. What? I love the idea of longer stream because of late start. Uh, we'll see. If it were entirely up to me, I would do that somewhat often. Okay, let's tidy this up. I did start late because I'm not doing so well physically, though. All right, that should be symmetrical. Should be, oh. Uh, what was I trying to say? Uh, should be streamlined. That's a lot of empty space. Well, we do need defenses. We probably need more space for defenses up here. I don't like how much empty space is here and back here. But let's see what we get. Only 2776 hull stress. I actually thought this might be over 3k already. Streamer is most important. Take any time off you need. Thank you. Um... Although most important sounds kind of grandiose. Is there really no way to... To move the engines up like one tile at least? No, there isn't. Can you fix up the heat pipe going from the upper two generators to the lower four? What do you mean? It's both at a 45 degree angle, but also not fully. You mean like this? This one needs a connection. There's nothing I can do here that's like super consistent. I guess that looks more... More consistent, I suppose. Okay. Uh, 
one, but yeah. Does it actually tell us here? If we get, like, the empty space bonus? Yeah, minus 318. It would be 3188 if not for the empty space. So just how much do we have to add before we stop getting that empty space bonus? Or some of it. Minus 318.8. Uh, where's our projectors? Here they are. It's still maxed out. Minus 318.8. That's how I thought it works. Uh, let's fill up some of this space and see what happens. It's still maxed out. Although... Oh, we'll see. Still maxed out. Okay. I think we can stay below 3k. Yeah, this might be doable. I do wish we didn't have to go so wide, adding so many engines, but considering, uh, considering how low our hull stress is for the moment, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we could get away with two more engines, but for now we'll just try to make this work. Let's get rid of these very silly walls. Place some defenses. Oh. Oh no. Are we good? What? Okay, uh, that, that's, that's weird. There we go. Still need at least one more. Ideally, I'd like to have double shields everywhere. It's going to look a bit scuffed. I wish we had more than eight directions that we could face the shields in. Should be okay. How about this? And then build walls around it. Then probably find out that our whole stress went up too much. Uh, we could probably stretch this out a bit more and still get streamline. not too bad. Mm. 
Okay. Now it's the walls. Copy the pasta. Copy the shields. And that's going to go about there. We're going to need some power. Before I decide where to put the power poles, let's do these inserters. I'm going to want green wire connecting all of them. Nice and easy connection. Uh, and that'll go to the spaceship console. It will also go to a constant. May as well connect this here. That looks kind of weird, actually. Uh, and power pole. I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, that's actually not quite going to touch laser turrets if we put them all the way at the front. Okay. Let's remove the extra floor. And see what kind of stats we have. 3067. Empty tiles minus 352. So we did add too much space up here. Not by much. I really wish we didn't have this much empty space back here though. That's actually kind of upsetting how good of a job we did at making the turbines not take up as much space. But we have to put the engines X tiles back from where we would like to just because we can't get the pipes to get through otherwise. Jellyfish, indeed. So, let's do this. How much difference does that make? 3067? 343041. Three, oh, Can I actually. Oh, great. Now I have to move the whole ship if I wanted to move this clamp over. Actually, that clamp wouldn't work out. Actually, I guess it would. Uh, I hate how you have to move the entire ship because of spaceship clamps. Does it still give us the right calcs with this? I think we found it didn't sometimes. Valid, unstable, okay. So if we cut this, move it all over one tile, would it be valid 
to do this. I imagine the answer is yes. Valid, unstable. Okay, cool. I don't love the way the engine is sticking out here, but... We do what we must. Because we can. Hull stress is 30-33. We're so close. Where can I shave off a bit of hull stress? I haven't mirrored this yet, but I'm sure it's not going to be enough. Thirty oh nine. Oh my god. We're so close. We're so very, very close. Okay. It's gonna end up looking a little bit wonkier. I wanna see how much difference that makes. Can I get a I should have done this ages ago. Uh wall Spaceship wall decon planner. And then... Walls only. And shield projectors. Okay, now what? It's all ruined? Oh no. Placing some walls in the middle could shave some stress. True. It is a bit hacky, but aren't inner walls good for stress? What, like apart from putting holes in the ship? I don't know. Uh, I imagine, yeah. 2994, we did it though. Let's see what this does. 2957. Damn, that does make a difference. Minus 343. I, I expect we're still at the cap for empty tiles. Minus 343. Yeah, we are. Okay, well, why don't we add some, like, decorative... inner walls that look like pillars or something. And that gets us down to 29.76. So we're, by adding mass, we're making the ship go faster. It's not decorative. Those are structural walls, indeed. Uh, and I guess... Over here? Now then. Just how much shielding do we have here? Uh, a bit. I'm pretty sure we've got at least double shields everywhere. Question is, uh, can we support shields only with only 10 condenser turbines? That's actually starting to sound a bit sketch. What if we spam lasers? I, I, 
can't spam lasers. Uh, I don't like having them this far back behind the shields. They're just going to open up and then start shooting too late. This basically has double shields everywhere. That'll have to do. Put that further forward. I'm sure that's overkill. 2976 hull stress. Uh, I must have misread that because we're on 2970 now. Or maybe I added some walls. Uh, but yeah, that is well below... Well, it's significantly below um, our 3000 target. Uh, I think I'll move these power poles because I would like to put the water storage here. And we need some antimatter storage. Antimatter booster tank. Actually, just make this nice and full over here. That connects up. And then same thing on the other side. That should be more than enough fuel. Way more than enough. Whole stress hasn't changed somehow. That's weird. A booster tank's free for like whole stress. Because I'm pretty sure adding like a combinator costs one or half a one. 2070.9. 2070.9. I don't get it. Okay, uh, I'm a little concerned now. Maybe the extra floor is doing something weird to the calculation. Do we get rid of this? There we go. Okay. Boop, 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 doop, 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 doop. That looks decent. Let's see the stats. Ghetto boy, Kandar Jr., welcome in. Container stress went up though. Yeah, but as long as it's below hull stress, it just doesn't matter. It just picks whichever one's higher. Weird, I know. You still have empty space bonus, so until you get rid of that bonus, can add things. I mean, I remember adding, like, literally just a combinator and seeing hull stress go up by one, but... Like, you get a discount. It, we're getting an empty space bonus of 343.6, right? But... 
Yeah, I guess it must have been because I was dropping below the empty tiles threshold. Because it doesn't actually say anything. It, it doesn't seem like putting things on the spaceship floor directly costs anything. It's only when it eats into the empty space bonus. Huh. And yeah, the maximum empty space bonus is 10% of the spaceship floor cost. Cool, cool, cool. So up to a point, adding stuff is free. That's nice. Uh, where do I want to put these? Probably like here, definitely here, don't really have room here, um, we need the knack to be able to cover, uh, the accumulators, to be able to cover the, uh, the biggest possible spikes from the shields. I don't think we need this many, but I'm curious as to what we can get away with. All of it, apparently. Wow. Okay, then. Sure, why not? Just leave that out. I think it didn't update because something is wrong. No tiles found connected to it. God damn it. What's the problem? Is it over here? Or is that just how it refreshes? Did I, like, remove a bit of floor or something? That might be it. No? <sighs> now what? No tiles found connected to a properly enclosed console. Is there, like, floor missing somewhere? I imagine... I imagine that's how we broke it, but I don't see... I don't see where there's a gap. Like, if I put this... if I remove this... Okay, yeah, it like pulses from where the problem is, it looks like. So it's over here somewhere. Oh! Sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky, I'm pretty sure we can get away with this. Or even this. And that'll very slightly reduce our footprint. Twenty-nine seventy. Twenty-nine sixty seven oh, we got even lower. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. So we can easily, uh, we can get away with these uh, massive Naquim emulator batteries very easily, apparently. Let's add a couple of chests, or... Does this have an output? Yeah, blank data cards. Add some I.O. for interstellar travel data. And power poles. Can just barely touch everything if I put them here. Uh, 
I don't like how they're right next to the console. It's a little better. If we need two more engines to get this thing up to speed, I'm going to be a little bit upset. If we're like two units under target, then... I could just look for more ways to slightly reduce the hull stress. Like that. Twenty nine fifty eight. Wunderbar. How's that? Twenty nine forty six. Twenty-nine forty-three. Okay. It's going down. And if we really wanted to, we could like add some empty space here. I'm not gonna do that. Uh but yeah, I think that is ready. Let's borrow our circuitry from before. And we're going to look for a speed signal. Because we may as well. Use this for the speed signal that we're going to have to feed to the spaceship console anyway. So up to 400 target speed based on accumulator charge. Uh, and then... This goes here. We're going to need to request... Antimatter canisters... Loads of them, just to be safe. Uh, and we're also going to need a constant combinator. For... Anchor 2. Anchor using... Oops. Um, that's not right. That, what am I doing? Focus, focus. Okay. Seems good. Can't fit another one of those pillars over here. You know what? I feel like that's a little bit cozier. And I'll just put the canister conveniently over here. We'll we'll just get rid of it once the once the power system is seeded. Okay. I think that's it. This is... Attempt number three for a relatively small 
victory ship. Most importantly, we're trying to keep it under the 3k threshold, so it requires one less research. Is there floor missing under the console? No, it was under the, uh, clamp. The sneaky, sneaky clamp. Yeah, because I think if you decon planner the, uh, spaceship floor over here, it'll actually let you remove it, which is a bit weird. Okay, will it reach 250? Will our power system work as well as we hope it does? Will our defenses be enough? Probably. Pro probably. Oh, that wasn't free. Hold on. 339. We're looking for 343.2 from the empty tiles. That's it. That was literally just over the edge. I kind of want to move the uh, nexus up here just for the look of it. All right, that's going to be it. Let's blueprint. Uh, what's the hull stress? 2943.3. Tiles. And why are we bonking? Blueprint with tiles. Yes. No doors, hashtag unplayable. I'm pretty sure it actually costs stress to have, uh, to have doors. Like, let's, let's, let's confirm this real quick. 2926. Wait, what? Yeah, 2926. That's getting there. Uh, no, we do have door. Let's look in the editor. I thought that number was off. 2943.3. Who needs doors if you can move so fast that you walk through a wall, right? 2943.3. Okay, we're going to add one door. And... 2944.05. It does cost something. Whole ship ruined. Because doors do not give negative uh, hull stress. So it's minus, it, it's, it's plus two hull stress, uh, but also the empty tiles bonus is slightly worse. Delete the ship and start over? No! Okay, uh, let's, uh, we already emptied this out, yes? Pretty much, yeah. Actually, very much. So, decom? I'm not gonna worry about the water. And especially because, oh, yeah, I was going to say the construction train's stealing a bunch of stuff. Um, once again, I think it's going to be easier if we trim away the excess floor rather than replacing it all. Wait, what's the stress now? Two nine forty five, let's call it. And blueprint and put in here. Two nine 
and build. Just wait for the floor. This one's definitely a bit chubbier. And remove the floor. I think some of that... Oh, that, some of that floor is going to be a bit messed up. Underneath the clamps. It was left over. Is that going to do it? Why doesn't it go to blueprint if I shift? Oh, uh, control C shift. There we go. Yeah, there's no spaceship floor tiles here. Okay. Trim this nonsense. And we need to redo water input, which I guess is going to be over here. Oh, that's uh, a little awkward. No, it's fine. Four tiles, figures. There we go. Alright, water is flowing in. I don't think we've connected it on... connected the two sides. So the whole stress is... no, it should still be about the same. Or it might have gone up slightly because we might have eaten into our... bonus. 341. Yeah, we're slightly, slightly into our empty space bonus. Let's just get rid of some of the accumulators. I'm sure we don't need that many. And add some lasers. Why not? War Striker, welcome in. Nice ship, thank you. New Fire, welcome in also. So this is the final ship, or are you going to do the Quantum Ring victory as well? Uh, well, we'll still be doing the run for a while because we're going to be aiming for consistent three per second science, which, come to think of it, Consumption Pack 4. There was a big spike, and then it stopped. Uh, that was apparently much more short-lived than I expected. Wait, why are we not... Oh, it's Deep Space Science Pack 2. Why is Deep 2 broken? The, what? Deep, deep 2 is fine. What? What do you mean? What? 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 Deep Space Science Pack 2, 1k. Oh, is it because I changed the provide stack threshold? Request stack threshold? And apparently I missed this one. 
Is it the only one I missed? It looks like it. All the rest of these say 11k. 1.1 short train loads. Okay then. It's a mic stream all over again? Yeah, sorry, I got distracted. Uh, what was the other question? Oh, the ring. I don't care for the ring. Alright. I'm sure it'll take more than... Actually, since there's six of these... Well, yeah, the reactors themselves have to warm up. I'm sure it'll take another insert to, uh... To get these up to temperature. Water is already most of the way full. We need some antimatter. We, we need some antimatter. There we go. What, what's going on here? Oh no. Rocket Tom, thank you so much for the eight months with Prime. Very much appreciated. Thank you. And welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Yeah, I kind of didn't quite leave room uh, for the antimatter input over here. I mean, uh, there's a few places we could put it. Not actually a whole lot. Like, technically, I could just put it up here. I'm really tempted to just do this, let it fill up, swap it out. Maybe move the anchor up by one tile? That means rebuilding the entire ship, because anchors snap to, like, train rails for some reason. Not sure why, to be honest. Alright. Um, remind me to swap this pipe out before we go. How's our heat? Over 5k? And... Fantastic. Only 4k at the end over here. I'm only slightly concerned by the length of the heat pipe. It didn't seem like there was much lag uh, between the heat here and the heat here when we were experimenting with it earlier. Especially when these were already saturated. So the anchor is a two by two, yes. Okay. How much antimatter do we really need to go for a test drive? Because I think we've got enough already. And if this isn't uh, promising as a victory ship, we're not going to be taking it very far. Okay, let's see how we go. Um, get rid of that. Got our speed signals. We've got this configured correctly. Seems good. Gets him. All right, let's go. Hello again. Thank you so much, BG Nyman, for the four months of the Prime. Very much appreciated. And welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Let's go to Calidus. Why is launch still disabled? Ship integrity valid. Okay, cool. Will it be fast enough? Can we... Wait, wait, wait. Can we do multiple predictions at once with, at once with Twitch? Or is it just the one? Ship 
Shall we do a prediction? Okay. First prediction... Uh, I, I guess it's going to have to be... I, I think we do have enough energy and defenses. I think the real question is, is it fast enough? Probably. Will victory ship attempt 3 be greater than or equal to 250 speed? Can't really fit more correct grammar. All right. Prediction is live. I should have set the time limit a bit shorter. Oh no, it's quite short. Golden train? What? Then crash and we're back to the beginning with pion... No, no. Do I have... Uh... I should get some spare spaceship walls. Just Oh, we've got some spare spaceship walls. Just lying around in case something goes wrong. That's a good reason to put uh, pillars in your ships. They've always got some spare walls, just in case. Okay. Uh, let's actually aim for Shattered Skies. Because depending on how this goes, I might want to... Make sure we keep going. Why is the temp here below 5k? Because we stopped it like exactly... Oh, because we consumed it all. Okay, good talk. Let's just put a few in. Alright, prediction time is running out. We'll get started just as soon as it's too late for people to make the bet when the answer's obvious. Alright, three, two, one, go. Sustained greater than 250? Yeah, I think that... Well, no, actually, it's a question of whether we have enough engines for this uh, hull stress. Rouse, Rouse. We're already at 200. I think we might make it this time. Although acceleration is already dropping off. Power is is a, slow and insidious killer. a problem, apparently. Why is power a problem? Why are we at, why is it out of 4.1 gigawatt? There's six. Water output? Oh, you're joking. O okay. We can, we can fix this. This is, this is fine. This is fine. Yes, indeed. All right, so we're out of six gigawatt here. Nice. doop a doop Mikkelsen DKK, thank you for the follow. doop a doop Fantastic. Uh, let's keep the mining prod going. So we get an idea of probably Vinamalange bottleneck. The engines are turning on and off. That's not a good sign. But we've got plenty of power. Why are they turning on and off? Are we at our target speed? That No. We are. The accumulators are not 
at 250. Now they are. That's why the speed, the, the acceleration dropped off faster than expected. Oh, 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 oh. I think we're going to make it. But it dipped. Uh, you know what? I th uh, if the accumulators aren't going to reach almost maximum, then we probably can't maintain a high speed even if we stop listening to the accumulators for target speed. Target speed is now up to 300. I think we're fine. I think we got it. That's 250. Countdown has begun. And energy seems okay. Heat is continuing to rise at the end of at the end of the heat pipe. I think this is it. I won, indeed. Uh, if I go slash prediction here, does that let me choose outcome? Yes. 85% doubters? I'm, 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 I'm going to quote Damsel here and say non-believers suck it. That's, that's a nice ratio for the points for people who bet you bet yes. Veldak is shaking and crying. <laughs> Cheating. Just in time for the win, indeed. Can I see who voted, uh... Like, the whole list? Seven people. Wait. It's 7 versus 9? Why is it 15% versus... Oh, it's points. Points percentage. Right. So, so, so the yes voters were not as confident. <laughs> it dipped below 250 and reset the clock? I don't think it... Did it? I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. It's the only way to be well, sure. Oh yeah, it did too. But the question was whether the ship would be able to go 250. Uh, with this many engines, which it turns out it can. So what's our problem? Energy. Um, hmm. The target speed can go all the way up to 400, reading from these four accumulators. So, if it's getting low enough to drop the target speed below 250... I don't know if we can actually keep up. We can try. Let's just force it. Uh, and I'm gonna change this to... I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. A for accumulator. It's the only way to be sure. We're, we're going to have to wait a bit on the nukes. If A is less than... Oh, this would have been waiting for... This would have been waiting for um, super low accumulator charge before it refueled. Oops. Uh, what's 95 times 4? I think I know the answer. 380. A is... Oh, god damn it. Now it's all out of sync. Actually, it kind of worked out. Okay, so we're going to change this to A. Take this off the constant. And we've just always got a target speed of 255. Which, apparently, is the best that these engines can do anyway. Uh, 
255.2. It's perfect. False advertisement. That's why I asked about sustained. What? But the... But the question was how many engines we need. The whole point of the predictions was to spend the one cogs on nukes, indeed. Uh, how many nukes have we got in the pipeline? Two? Two. Okay. Uh, we will nuke as soon as this clock reaches zero or gets reset. I th think it's going to get reset. I think we need more power. It we're, we're losing charge so slowly as well. That's the sad thing. Like, uh, I think literally like two more condenser turbines might be enough here. Of course, then we'd be, like, struggling to fit a shield over here. Maybe we don't really need this one. Alternatively, we could just spam more Naquium accumulators so that they can go the distance for 600 seconds. That feels a little bit cheesy. Yeah, ooh. See how see how quickly the uh, accumulators dropped when a big rock hit the uh, shields. Hey, it's still going even though the accumulators ran out. Oh, we didn't we didn't dip below two fifty five. At uh, two fifty. Oh. Oh. Is this? No, we 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 got to be losing heat, right? Like that's the last line of uh That that's the other accumulator charge is how much heat we've got over 5k. Uh and we're currently just like spamming antimatter canisters. But it's still like 7.5k at the end of the heat pipe. We actually are gaining accumulator charge sometimes. Huh. Is this actually... Is this actually going to make it? Okay. Less cheaty than deleting resources using cannons? How dare you. Okay. Uh, start prediction. Victory ship win in current state. Go. Crap, I should have given it a shorter timeout. I think it'll take long enough to find out that that's okay, though. Oh, we're starting to dip a little bit on power. Maybe not. We've got just a little bit of leeway when we dip into power. When we lose a little bit of speed. You can close it early. Not true. Well, it's... I can't see how. It's probably fine. What do I do? Slash prediction? End submissions. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, I'm going to give it like... 30 seconds. Oh, we're kind of low on antimatter. Oh, no. 
Antimatter goes a long way, but this this one's a bit of a guzzler. All right, prediction is getting closed. End submissions. We're down to 3.35 seconds. Okay, antimatter's not getting drained that fast. Oh, that's a rock. That's a big one. Two, we went down to 253 point something, but we're back up. This is so close. All in. Yeah, I... I think we, I think we might. I'd give it like 60-40. Because our accumulator charge is empty all the time. And when we, when we hit a bit big rock, we lose some speed. Because the energy is getting drained. Oh, that's another one. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, but then as soon as, as soon as the shields have mostly regenerated... Uh, our speed starts going back up again, and we've got a little buffer of, like, up to five units of speed. But realistically, it's like four units of speed most of the time. Actually, I almost suspect that, like, 254 is the threshold for really big rocks to spawn. Probably not. Is Shattered Skies far enough away? Good question. Uh, where, where's the frickin'... Where are we right now? Wait, what's our destination? Shattered Skies. It's over here. Why are we not visible? Where is our ship? What is it called? The sickle. Where, where is the sickle? Oh, was it because... No, there's no way we're still in Calidus. Where are we? What is going on? Oh, right, we're not like visible on the map. Okay, what's our ETA? It's jumping all over the place. It's like... Yeah, it's because it's spatial distortion. So it's not going to, like, stop when we get there. Where are you? I think it's like when we're headed for Foenestra. So we're not actually ever going to reach um, any destination uh, this way. As long as we're running the... Uh, spatial distortion recipe here. I think they changed that. Um, but yeah, it's looking pretty promising, honestly. We're down to 200 seconds. Uh, we still have like two and a half thousand antimatter in each container, so yeah, that's not going to run out. We, we started with a very small amount compared to our massive storage here. Cool, cool, cool. Three minutes to go. Game time. So really like five minutes or so. Isn't that a problem? No, we can just like turn off the recipe when we want to go home, I think. I'm quite pleased that we just happen to have, like, 
255. 255.2 was our max speed with these engines. It's just fast enough with a little bit of a buffer. Let's see that power grid. The Nexus does lose power when the shield generators uh, have something to say. But apparently it just isn't enough. These brief spikes are not enough to, uh, to make it shut down. I think that first dip way back here was enough to stop it. Uh, someone said the counter got reset. But apparently these other ones don't reach the threshold. If you had to keep it perfectly powered uh, the whole time, obviously this wouldn't be good enough. I think it's not that it has to be perfectly powered the whole time, I think it's just that you have to stay above 250. Which, you know, generally doing one or uh, only being able to do one of those uh, that's a state of affairs that's not going to last very long the Nexus has to charge up once the recipe was enabled it's as exciting as waiting for triple F we got all the way up to 255.2 again by the way Not really gaining accumulator charge, though. I, I certainly wouldn't expect that. Uh, 1.6 megajoules per accumulator. Is something different now, or is it just a fluke? I think it's just a just variance. We just didn't hit some big rocks for a while. Seventy seconds to go. Save the game now. When you reach ten seconds left, load the ki game. Exam. Raus, raus. Why? Imagine how many accumulators it would take to brute force ten minutes of this. These Nacrium accumulators do not last long when we hit a big rock. With the uh, insufficient condenser turbines that we've got. I honestly think like two more condenser turbines might make this just super stable. It's time for ad break. Uh... No, it is definitely not time for ad break. More like 150 seconds? We have up to 40 UPS, I'll have you know. This is looking like it's in the bag. 20 seconds left and we're at almost max speed. Beautiful. Jellyfish for the win. And of course, 80% of it is power plant, and that's being generous. Eh, no, I'd say about 80%, more or less. And... Ah... <sighs> Official victory. 29 billion small asteroids. That is not a small number of small asteroids. Thank you, thank you. Hi, and G, G, uh, Fulgo, welcome in. Good to see you again. Congrats, thank you. Oh my goodness. Veldak, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. 
Thank you so much. Alright, now for chats moving too fast, I couldn't see. Before I close this, are there any interesting stats that we want to look at? Big snapper. This is all just kills, right? Is there anything else? No, I don't think so. We can look those up anytime anyway. 913 game hours. Damn. I mean, I know we've been putting it off ever since we officially won, but still. We should probably head back to Hagen. Hagen Orbit. And we're probably going to want to turn off this recipe here. Does that actually... What? What? Why do I have so many? Okay. So do I have to, like, deke on this to go home, or what? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yoink. Hagen Orbit is 36 minutes away. Wait, where are we? Oh my goodness. Um... I think it pointed us at Shattered Skies and just had us keep going or something? Okay, we should probably go home via Foenestra. Let's do that. Jane, stop this crazy thing. No turning back now? Uh, I think we are turning back, though. Alright, so we'll be at the anomaly in not, not a whole lot of time, since we're moving at 250. We're already 10% of the way there. And then we just set our destination to Hagen. Game, congratulations, you won. Your voyage to home will take two years. So I heard there's a new hard mode for play. <clears throat> anyway. Welcome in Chrono. Crazy Heather, good to see you again. Uh... But yeah, that's probably going to be it for today. Let's find someone to ra- Oh, celebratory nukes. Sure. I forgot to to do those. Let, let's end on the celebratory nukes. Uh, what are we nuking, though? How about... Delivery cannons. So we've got two for Walknul, Dardanome, Zedius, and Pullman. It's the only way to be sure. It's the only way to be sure. Save before. Uh, yes. Oops, I fired two. It's fine. How many does it take to? Oh my goodness. At least three. I say we take off and nuke the entire. This is the first one that counts because I wasn't looking. It's the only way to be sure. That one's for data name. Uh, and then we've got Holman. Fantastic! We finally got it. This one is for Walk. Did I actually not buy the first one or like hear it? This one's also for Walk. Uh, we'll probably aim at this one now. I say we take off for Zedius. 
the only way to be sure. It is the only way. 55 and Fritley. Wow, the ghosts. I say we take off it hit him so hard the ghosts disappeared. And our tour is lagging. Sure. Okay. One. Two. Uh, two. Oh, right, this has to happen. Normally I'm not, uh, doing them back to back. And this is the way three. Let's aim for this one. Fantastic. All right, no more nukes. That's going to be it for today. Let's see who we're raiding. Uh, but first, set this to go to Hagen Orbit. Let's save. Who's playing Factorio? Someone has a no god no emote, uh, gif. Crustorio KSE Vitamelange, Tens Dungeon. Usually we don't have many SE options. Derpy Moose. All right. Let's raid someone that we haven't raided like five to ten times. Just as long as the quality's not atrocious or something. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, that seems okay. All right. Hopefully, we don't give him a heart attack. The forecast? Wait, what? Thanks for the stream. Thanks for hanging out. Windsinger, Veldak, Turtles. Prediction payout. Oh, right. Prediction. Choose outcome. Victory ship win. Fantastic. There we go. It's raining points. Glad to have caught the victory ship, indeed. I wasn't sure it would be the victory ship here. I, I wasn't really expecting it without another tweak or two. I think you missed basically the entirety of this. Oh. Believers keep winning. <laughs> Always. Congrats again. Thanks for the stream. Take care, Ekene. Uh, Ekene. War Striker. 4K Cogs. Nice, nice. All right. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you're into that. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And until next time, stay safe. See you all again tomorrow, including you lovely lurkers. I didn't queue up the raid, so it's going to take... Oh, here we go. Thanks for the raid. That's a uh, that's a lot of folks. <laughs>